long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Jabba the Hutt is dead. His usurper, Bib Fortuna, is dead. Boba Fett reigns in Mos Espa on Tatooine. But how does Boba Fett rule? Does he rule with an iron fist or with an open hand? How did he get to his power? And most importantly, how in all the hells did he survive the Sarlacc from Return of the Jedi? These questions and more will be answered in the, in first the episode. book of Boba Fett. And also, yeah, you're right, in the first episode. <laughs> Welcome to Fake Nerds Watch, everyone. I am Ben Magnet, along with my awesome Star Wars bros, Brandon T. McClure. What's up? Sparks Witty. Hi. And, of course, the dude who was wearing the Mandalorian armor himself, Ryan Eliopoulos. It's me. Mean? I'm Boba Fett today. I wish Woo. I was green screen so I could look. I got a dirty one back there, but you don't want to <laughs> wear that one. Uh, man, man, that was a beautiful, wonderful, dramatic intro. I wish it matched the show that we watched. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I'm going to start hot. I don't care. Yeah. I am so angry. I have two things I'm going to say right off the bat because I just kind of want to do it to cover the conversation, which is that I don't want to yuck anybody's yum. No, nope. there are things nope. that like, I know I liked in the series. Yeah. A lot of people didn't. There are things that other people like in the series. I guess I'm a wet blanket. I'm yeah. sorry that that's the case. Uh, I'm glad that people found things they liked in general. It seems like everybody likes something in the show. Yeah, there's, there's absolutely stuff to like. That that's, is, that's great. Yeah. And we're going to dig into it. And even if we disagree on certain things, like I'm glad that anybody found something they liked that's great. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And then the other thing is, uh, I know because we're doing seasons, I'm kind of mixed at this point where I'm like, man, I kind of, I kind of almost wish we had done weekly only because I know, only because I know there's a lot of little positives. Yeah. I'm just, we're just not going to get to, and sure. I'm not going to get to, and that's a bummer. And they're there. And like, we don't have time and that's, that's not going to happen. And I'm sorry for that. I'm going to try and throw in some, but I am not going to get all of them. That's all I wanted to cover. Like, there's definitely like more positives than I know we're going to mention that are like smaller ones, but there's they are nice. Uh, they're probably not all going to get touched on. Yeah, that's just what happens. So, like, Matt Barry is a pretty good droid. Sure, yeah. like that's one of them. Uh, I think like when there is puppeteering in this, it looks really good. Um, yeah. For like the yeah. Rancor, the Bantha, they all look incredible. I'll tell you what, y'all. Um, we live in the 21st century where special effects are great. The aesthetics of Star Wars are are they're always going to look pretty good. Yeah. So, like, I have no complaints about the look of the show. Looks great. Uh, it is all fundamentally stuff that, like, that's, like, about the heart and the emotions and the brain. Looking at it looks great. Guess what? It's Disney. They have a billion dollars. It's never going to look for one scene. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about it. Yeah. But generally, like, Star Wars is always going to look good. So it's hard for me to be like, <laughs> yeah, it looks good. Like, of course it looks good. It's That's the whole Star Wars aesthetic is to mm -hmm. look good. If it looks bad, that's the problem. I think I more just wanted to, what I would want yeah. to highlight. This is one I knew I wanted to touch on is I was really happy when you saw like clear shots of like, that's a real rancor. Yeah. Like that's yeah. a real puppet rancor that he's on. That's mm -hmm. cool. That looks great. Yes. Uh, Cause they could have easily just not done that at all. Uh, yeah. It could have been CGI throughout the whole thing. I am glad that they chose moments where they're like, this is a puppet Bantha. This yes. is a puppet rancor. I'm like, thank God. I Thank God always... that we're going back yes. to having more practicals. I am always a fan of practical over CGI. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, uh, I want to say a few things, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. It was very hot in the show when it started. If you recall, I've said how much I enjoyed the show, and then I stopped watching it. And then I got decided to catch up. And I still was not I was still was not sure that I wanted to do this. I was still I was still not sure. I was like, you know what? I'm I don't know if I have anything to say really to add. And then the show pissed me off. Mm-hmm. And like, like Spark said, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. If you like the show, sure, it's great. And I don't even hate the show. I'm just very pissed off. And more so about what it means for the future of Star Wars and how it probably means I'm not interested anymore. Um, and, I, and, I wanted, and I want to start there because I, I'm very upset. Well, let's get I, Ben real yeah, quick. Um, initial. So, I mean, the more I stew on it, and once again, don't want to yuck any yums, don't want to yuck up the yum. But uh, it, the more I think about it's just it, it's a weird phrase. Yeah, no, it is. But the more I think about it, I love half of this show. Mm -hmm. And the other half, it's weird because there are, I, as a whole, I love half of it. And then the other half of it is still, I still really like. But at the same time, I'm here for one specific thing. And then the half, and then like the tail end of the show just 
do- dovetails into something completely different. It's like, I love, it's weird. It's like, I love this, but at the same time, I don't love this, but I also, I do love this. It's this weird parallel of I do, but I don't, but I also do. Oh, I Ben, can't... let me, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry it, go ahead. It is, it is freaking weird. Cause when I was watching um, one of the episodes, obviously we're going to talk about a certain episode. When I was watching that episode, I was like, man, I love this. And I thought to myself, I was like, but wait, I'm here for X, but I'm getting Z. I want X. Yeah. And oh, that, that is the, the super funny conundrum too. Cause like, I'm not hot on the show, but man, I guess I realized I like Mandalorian a lot more than I did before. Because when I watched those episodes, I was having a good old time. Um, Cause that's a character that like, I thought did have a little bit of depth and like I watched two seasons of them and like any character that Boba Fett had in this show for me kind of died halfway through the show and they didn't do anything to fix it. And they especially made it worse at the ending. Mm -hmm. And it was especially fun watching it with you because I dropped off the show very quickly. And then Mm -hmm. Sparks was like, no, I'm gonna give it one more week. I'm gonna give it one more week. I'm gonna give it one more week. And then it didn't satisfy the ending. And then I think we were both landed on the same thing at the end. I mean, that's so, a, that's another reason why I like, going, me out. why I like going back. Like I am also grateful that we didn't do the week to week because yeah. a lot of it would have been me coming on here being like, I kind of have to wait for the end to know how I feel about a choice. And that's not a good and show. That's, and that's, that's not a good show, y'all. If you have to do that for multiple is, weeks, that's uh, not a good show. Uh, I, I think that like, because what I told you is uh, kind of echoing what Brandon was saying specifically. Uh, I think I only get so bothered by this one because this wasn't just like, oh, it wasn't good. It was like, there was clearly potential for a solid thing here and they just like totally fumbled it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so it's just, it's disappointing because it falls short of being as good as it obviously should have been. And Um, like the the thing is like coming off of, because I went back to watch the Mandalorian episode where Boba Fett is like properly introduced, you know, the one where he's awesome and kicks all, kicks all that ass. Yeah rules and like when we go to this show which has the same team that did that episode yeah um specifically it they've they've softened every hard edge on boba fett mm. and like i don't need to see like boba fett be a ruthless bounty hunter anymore i get the, the arc of the show with that he's going working away from that we see how he does that and honestly i like all that i like how we see him standing his edges himself but we still saw that boba fett the one who killed Bib Fortuna and took over his throne beat up a bunch of stormtroopers like it was nothing. And yeah. so, like, then we get to this Boba Fett, and he's just kind of a wet blanket most of the time. And I, I was really upset about like most of the action isn't him until the end. Um, yeah. and I feel like there could have been more of this kind of 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 that Boba Fett in there. And I think they went a little too far in trying to kind of I don't exactly know what the goal was for this. Yeah. I, I want to respond to that specifically, which is that I think, I think, and I agree with the idea of the intention Yeah, was that Boba was going to be like, he's now the power of the crime boss taking over the daimyo of the area. And therefore like the whole thing was supposed to be, everybody's underestimating him. Everybody doesn't believe he's got it. There's a lot of reasons to reinforce that he probably doesn't have it. And the whole time he's being like, I'm playing nice. I'm playing nice. And then at the end, I'm not playing nice now. Uh, and so like, I, I think the intention that you were supposed to feel and like what it was doing in the early episodes was supposed to be like, just wait, if you make him have to put the helmet on, if you make him have to go out and do it, you're not going to like it. He's trying to do it. The not, nice like way. every step up to him having to do that. That's what he's trying to do. And I'm like, I'm all for that. If that's the payoff we get in the end, they botched that payoff in the end. So that's why I'm like, that didn't, that didn't work. But I did like that idea Mm -hmm. that we started from of like, I love when we start the beginning of the show Mm -hmm. and it's everybody being like, oh, I didn't see your litter. Oh, you wouldn't be informed of this. Everybody just like casting like backhanded compliments at Boba and being like, we don't take you seriously. We don't take you seriously. And I'm like, cool, cool. We're going to see like why they should. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right um and no <laughs> and, and uh that's i think like the biggest misstep of the show is that uh i i really everything that i think i don't like about this really comes down to favreau's writing um this season he is the sole writer for everything that isn't the sixth episode with feloni tagging in to help him write it uh but he is the sole writer for all of it and like did not execute the idea clearly or succinctly or any of it because what was so interesting about the politics of the area i was all for that when we started like what is this 
judgment on Boba going to be? How is he going to overcome and like supersede their expectations and show that they're underestimating him and what he can do and and how he's going to show that he cares more about the people and therefore is a better leader for them than the people who are currently uh, mm -hmm. trying to wage around the power. All of that setup was there. And then we just left it. The potential mm -hmm. on this show was, was high before. Yeah. And at the end of episode two, I remember specifically, cause he's like, Bo was like, I'm going to help you get your land back. And that, whether that's, that's real world implications or even just Star Wars implications, that's incredibly cool. The idea that he's going to help the Tuscan Raiders, the indigenous people of this planet, take over the planet back again from, from the colonizers is too good of an idea for Star Wars to have, honestly. And there, and I knew I knew from the first episode they were going to kill the Tuscans. And the, pro the, the problem I had is they did it so early, so it's hard for me to really care about him, about them, or Bo Boba's struggle with being this new person. But we've had less than 30 minutes total of, of them together. I thought the Tuscan was going to die at the end of the season. So we see an entire season of Boba learning to be this nicer person. No, they get killed in the in, at the beginning of the third episode. I wanna, and then it doesn't even matter anymore. Hold up. I've been so... Sorry, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's the half of the show I love. Yeah. Is everything up to when Boba is fully healed in the back to tank? All the, I I, talk, I was talking to Fanny when we were watching this, and I told her like with with this show and with Mandalorian on how it explores more of the Tuscan culture and how this this for years this this is alien species of Star Wars that we always thought were were just like oh yeah the Tuscan Raiders they're bad guys they're like you know that whole thing. But watching Mandalorian and watching especially with Boba Fett where he gets accepted into the Tuscans, he learns their ways, he gains their respect, he. He learns their culture. It is so good. It is just like yeah. this is amazing. You see the parallels. It's like, oh my god, this is some this is some great shit. And the second they said, "Boba, you're healed," and it's like we don't get any more flashbacks. Like I love the flashback, the flashbacks of this show. I absolutely mm -hmm. adore seeing Boba go from out of the Sarlacc pit into the care of the Tuscans, earning their respect, learning their ways, learning how to fight like them. Mm -hmm. It is just like that. Is like. That is peak Boba Fett and him and like oh, I love how it goes back and forth from like present day Boba Fett what he's trying to to learn like the wilds of the, of the of Moss Espa how does he be the Daimyo how does he be this crime boss and he doesn't want to be like Jabba the Hutt like fear me bitches but like I will respect you if you respect me but then once we get to the end of the show it just falls apart. No, well, I want to I want to touch on both of your both of your points, uh, Ben and Ryan, um, because I think I I, I I fall between you two. Well, yes, I really love the first three episodes, and honestly, the first four episodes. I really like seeing Boba Fett, the flashback specifically, with the idea of dealing with the Tuscans and the indigenous people of Tatooine, which is something that Star Wars has been doing since episode one. The issue that Lucas brought up is that the Gungans are the indigenous people of Naboo, and so that opened up a whole a whole can of worms of 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 that of that aspect that Star Wars is never going to be willing to to address. Yeah. So. So I don't mind that they just kind of like dabble in it, but also to have that kind of flashback storyline drop halfway through the show was also, I feel, a mistake because to have these kind of flashbacks, have this kind of kind of uh, uh, a parallel storytelling, you you're supposed to do it in a way normally as what we're used to is that these characters that these flashbacks are going to tell the audience something that that will lead into the reveal of the end of the episode that informs and, the episode yeah it informs the episode and the issue is is that it doesn't because the main reveal of who killed the tuscans doesn't matter to the plot at all they when change we get, it once we get to the end, end anyway, mm -hmm. like a twist. no but that's what i'm talking about once yeah. we get to the end of the season once we get to the end of the season the actual reveal of who killed the tuscans doesn't it doesn't affect boba fett one iota doesn't affect the plot of the story doesn't matter at all and that really bugged me oh yeah, yeah. uh i've seen a lot of people point out that like it should have just been cad bane the pike should have hired cad bane yeah. to kill the tuscans so yes that, that final confront confrontation would have been personal and would have been immediately directly connected and that at least would have been a step in the right direction we need to touch on the fact that like the the coded indigenous representation of the tuscans and how they are uh they are brought to empathetic and connectable relatable life in one episode and then immediately murdered in the next 
is not good. It's playing into the same kind of this is this is approaching the borderline of fridging tropes. That's that's that's, uh, just, this that's is how a, I feel. That's yeah. what this is. If Boba Fett were himself a white protagonist, this would have gotten a bigger outcry of upset. But instead, it just got a kind of moderate outcry of upset about how they handled the Tuscans. Uh, I think Ken Knapsack and Joseph Scrimshaw did a good job of covering it on Force Center, where they basically directly acknowledged for five minutes they went over just. Everyone who feels that that was poorly handled for how it's coded for indigenous tribes people, and it clearly is, uh, and feels that the representation is bad, is 100% right. And you should listen to those voices, because if they're bothered by it, then they have a reason to be bothered by it. And that's completely right. valid, and everybody should be listening to that, because this is not the same debate as it should raise lightsaber be yellow or blue or whatever. This is not the same as that kind of Star Wars debate. This is a debate that affects the real world and real representation of diversity. And we, just like Ken Napsok and Joseph Scrimshaw, are not the authorities on that. So we're not going to speak to it other than to say, like, it's it's valid. It's not good representation. And it was a bad choice just for how they coded it in the show. It wasn't done well. The fact that we basically say, and he spent five years probably with the Tuscans and then they all died and that's it. That's the end. Um, and I really hoped because we specifically don't see the warrior's body in the montage. Like the main so I hope that one, some, yeah. we see the chief, but not the, the warrior. Okay, okay. Um, and the one who's coded as female. Okay. Uh, we don't see her body in that pile. And so I was like, maybe some of them survive and Boba's going to meet up with them later, or maybe Boba's going to go to the other tribes and kind of that's the thing he's going to rally to turn the tides against the pikes. Cause I'm like, that makes a sensible through line from where we started to where we end. Yeah. And we just don't do that. We don't give any kind of semblance of full circle around why that's the big, that's my big thing. Boba's, I thought the whole point of the Tuscan thing and why we were doing it, because the second episode is personally my favorite of the season. Mine too. I thought the whole point of why we were doing that was to learn that Boba's motivation for wanting to take over, why he went back to Tatooine specifically, and why he took over Jabba's throne was to give the power of the economy to the Tuscans and make them the power on top again as they should be because they are the native people of the land. Yeah. I thought that was the whole point. But that's not only not the point, we don't even know what the point is. We don't ever get the reason why Boba wants to do this other than he says it's all people. And I'm like, they were never your people. If anything was your people, it was the Tuscans. There's a scene at the end where when after like the big battle and he's just walking through the town and he's just like a citizen. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, what? The he's only like going, he's like going myth. He's like, oh, what does it have to be the, the only he's thing? Destroyed half the town with a rancor. The only thing that hints to his motivation for doing this is that he says, I want to kill the person who betrayed me and I want to be the person who, who gives the orders. I don't want to be the person who takes the orders anymore. And that's it. That's an episode four. That's it. And like that, that's not enough for me because first off, nobody betrayed him. I'm sorry. You got hit. You got hit and you fell into a sorry. Like that. It was an accident. Oh wait. Yeah. I was, okay. I was racking about. Uh, sorry. So real quick. I just, I did listen to the four center episodes about this. Um, There's, there's an expanded, uh, there's expanded lore stuff that Bib Fortuna is the one who betrayed him. Uh, He, he kind of like sold him out. This was um pre him getting Han back to Jabba. He sold him <laughs> out in the comics for part of the, this is like the thing that's happening in comic canon. Now Bib Fortuna like sold him out to try and have him like busted so that he would be murdered on the way to deliver Han back to Jabba and that's who it's supposed to be referring to and that's why he killed Bib Fortuna sorry that's what I it had is. that line I had that line sorry I can't take that into the consideration of the show I because the I, thing is without that the thing is the thing is like I so add that line you've already added you've already added expanded material into this with with a character Chris Hanton's in this show so like you have you have that character already and we don't need to know much more about that character other than he knows Boba Fett in some way they've met they've met prior to this Cad Bane has never had on screen mo moments with Boba Fett outside of one small episode and an episode that was never produced yeah so then you have so then you 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 add that line of like yeah Bib Fortuna betrayed me I want to kill him done it's really incredible. I buy that I'm into that how easy like a simple line can fix so many things like we talk about so many things like like plot uh, holes and like just a simple line can fix it. I'm like, man, they just like, they're just like, we, they read if first, first draft. Let's go. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Cad Bane should have been the, there's no antagonist. There's no real antagonist in the show. It should have been Cad Bane. He should have been like, Cad the Bane is introduced far too late. Oh, He's yeah. introduced at the end of the penultimate episode. He has like 10 minutes of screen time. He's not, he can't be like the villain of the show. Like you see Cad Bane. People. Like you see Cad Bane and it took me and actually I totally forgot who he was because I know I've seen Cad Bane before, but I never watched any of the Clone Wars or the 
or the following stuff that involves Cad Bane. I just recognize that blue alien with the tubes coming out of his neck. And I'm, I'm thinking, it's like, this dude's important, but how is he important? Then when we get to episode six, it's like, this guy should have been here so much earlier. Because I was like... Because- the issue, the issue comes down to going back to going back to to why does Boba Fett want to kill Bib Fortuna? The idea of of Cad Bane and Boba Fett having this history based on an unproduced Clone Wars episode. Um, this is this is their rematch, and this is this is a thing that is that has never been seen before. Uh, it it is leading up. To, it, it is it is dialogue referencing an episode of Clone Wars that again does not exist, and that's really a bummer. Because it doesn't land the emotion that the emotional of the emotion of that moment does not land, except for yeah. Tamara Morrison being a good actor. So, like, there is one line, and again, it, it need you need more than one line, but it's like you're getting old in your age or something like that, right? Like they could have had being a soft couple, in your old age. Yeah, they could have had a couple exchanges. It was like you know, like when you were a boy, blah 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 blah. That's all. I, that's all I really we, need. We should right? have we should have had Cad Bane introduced in episode four, and. Uh, uh, I thought the pace of the show was okay, and it wasn't bothering me at all. Uh, episode four is the one where I started to get herky jerky. Um, I'm Just not, like the speeder I'm bikes. Not cra- I'm not crazy. No, no, no. Uh, I'm not crazy about episode four uh, because I don't think I. It's a Fennec focused episode that I don't think actually develops her character very well at all, and mm-hmm. I think that's a bummer. Um, the the fact that like the whole episode is about Fennec and Boba like bonding on their first time, and the amount of bonding we get is that. Boba, Boba has like the most important line of the show there where he says like what he learned from the Tuscans is that you need a tribe mm-hmm. and that's a very important line but outside of that there's not a lot there other than like Fennec is like I guess I want to be with the guy who's taken his destiny into his own hands and that's cool and I'm like cool but like Fennec's not anything but like Ming-Na Wen being a really cool badass lady yeah. and that's cool but like give her development in that episode uh, or don't do it. I didn't need to see how he got the ship back. I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't need to see him shove it into the mouth of the Sarlacc. I, oh like, my god! I didn't, I didn't need oh that. My that, god. that was that was. I kind of like that though. I, yeah, size of bombs are real cool. I yeah. But the thing is, like, but the thing is, like, those weren't things I needed. What I needed was Fennec developed. What I needed was to feel like we were doing like character development, forward momentum in those flashbacks after the Tuscan mm-hmm. sh- shit mm-hmm. or during the Tuscan shit should have run longer because we apparently jumped five years somewhere. And there are three entire episodes of the show that don't deal with like the plot of the show because I forgot that there was an entire flashback episode. There's two Mando episodes and then this one. I'm like Boba Fett's like. Man, this show's structure is awful, you guys. Man. And, like, honestly, like, the, the flashback episode with Fennec is the one where you should have learned why Boba is doing all this. Like, what that that's where the core of what he's doing and what he wants should have been revealed. And it's it's muddy and barely surface is level in the episode where, at best. where they just kill off the bikers in, like, like one scene. I'm like, oh, yes. that's wiping our hands off the which past. Is also Which is also now, like, kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth because, like, they didn't that, do it. in that very episode, Fennec says, like, that's very unlikely that they did it. And yes. Boba's like, mm, but I think so. And <laughs> then murders them all. Uh, and then we move straight on from it. Um, so putting putting that aside, though, like, I thought the pacing was fine of those first four episodes, more or less. But that's because I assumed five and six were still going to be somewhat forward development uh, for the story that we're doing on Tatooine. Even if the fifth episode brought Mando in, it wasn't going to completely leave the story of what we're developing. And even if it did, it'd just be for one episode and episode six would keep setting up the conflict yes. of what we're getting. Yes. Cad Bane should have been introduced at the end of episode four, even if he didn't meet Boba himself. We should have sensed that he was the presence, even if he like started slowly interacting with people in Boba's perimeter, but not directly with Boba. Yeah. Like he's closing in so that we have that tension built up through the season. Like so a that secret the focus assassin. Is actually there. But yeah. instead, we get the most fan service episode of Star Wars I've ever seen in my entire life. And even though they're things that, like, yeah, they're cool and, like, it's nice to see them, they're in the wrong goddamn place. It's it's truly crazy that, like, the, like, the most, like, whether it's good or bad, the most, like, fan service thing that, like, and it's, we, I can't believe this happens on a TV show. Like, again, like, I was telling him, like, if I was, like, 13 years old and I saw Ahsoka and Luke and, like, all them hanging out together, I'd be like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Unfortunately, I grew up and I need like uh, here's the thing. matter. <laughs> this is the episode that pissed me off. Oh like, yeah. Full stop pissed me off. Because yeah. I don't give a shit about Luke Skywalker. Sure. I'm sorry. I don't care about Luke Skywalker. To me, he's the most boring character in the original trilogy. I think oh, he's cool, cool, whatever. The first time I liked him was The Last Jedi. I liked Han Solo. So when I when I saw Luke Skywalker and Ahsoka together, who are played by a robot and an actress who's transphobic, I don't mm-hmm. give a shit. 
what this is to me, and sorry, I'm so angry. I'm so sorry. But what this does to me, what this says to me is that Filoni and Favreau are only interested in smashing action figures together. That's it. And that's it. Yeah. I And I I'm, don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm definitely not as angry as you. Uh, but there is, this definitely was the episode of going, okay, you guys are definitely setting up a future I'm not as interested in for sure. That is, that is, yes. Um, yeah, that's all they're interested in. That episode showed me we are more interested in putting action figures together in a, in a way that's going to make people. I watch Marvel movies for a living, for crying out loud. And this yeah. is the most fan service thing I've ever seen in my life. It's just, it's the thing that gets me the most is again, like this didn't happen in Mandalorian season three. This happened in a side. Don't even get me started on the fact well, that this is in the wrong show. Well, we're doing a podcast about it, so we're going to talk about it. So, uh, the the arc of Grogu being with Luke, I thought it was going to be an entire season of the Mandalorian being alone, him having an arc of realizing he wants to be with his little son. They completely undercut the emotional weight of the finale there for is, season two. Mm -hmm. Not just that, if you don't watch Boba Fett, if you don't give a shit about Boba Fett, but you like Mandalorian, this is now essential watching. Yeah. And that's not and it's only two episodes. So you'll watch an entire show for a 30 minutes of total content with all the stuff that actually happens in the episode. And that's just a disservice to everybody. And I'm again, like I know there's lots of people who love it and I'm really happy for y'all. Uh, weird choices being made in, in your Boba Fett side project. So as, as if I may, as I was watching this, I was watching the episode and there are parts of it where I'm sitting there going, man, I love, I, cause there are parts of the episode that I do love. Cause Grogu's I am adorable. curious. I do want to see, what the training that what grogu's training is i do want to see mando alone i want to see that but the yeah. more i'm sitting there i'm like this is the book of boba fett where the f is boba fett i i think that's a big problem but i think um for me what episode six surprised me with what it did is that i watched it and i'm like i kind of wish that i didn't see grogu again for like three years yeah <laughs> I think I might hate him. Like, not, <laughs> not that I hate the character. What he, not that what I he hate represents. the character, but I hate what he brings out in the fandom that, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. As long as Grogu's there, it's great. And I'm like, I disagree. Uh, I would rather that we didn't see him for a long time. Um, he, I think I think that, like, we give too big a pass because just everybody's, like, gaga for Grogu. And yeah. I like Grogu. Fine. He is cute. I like him. I like what his presence means. Mm -hmm. I like his relationship with Din Djarin. I needed a break. <laughs> and it just really cheesed me off that, like, there are people out there who are like, episode six is the best episode of Boba Fett, maybe even the best episode of Star Wars television. And I'm like, bro, like, it doesn't even I'm come happy. close to the emotional weight of episode two of Boba Fett. No. It doesn't even come close. It just has things that you like to see, and I get it. I, there, I like yeah. to see those things, too. I always wanted to see Luke and Ahsoka have a conversation with each other. Yeah, That's great. Yeah, I wanted that. This isn't necessarily the context there, I wanted it in, nor is it the conversation I wanted. There's a uh, there's like a pretty like big tweet going around about like <laughs> someone who really liked the episode and basically saying like, "My hero Luke Skywalker is back, and that's all I could ask for." And I'm like, there there are people who are just like, "That's the thing I like. I'm happy it's there, no matter where it is." And again, like. I'm super happy for y'all. Like I was really invested in Boba Fett becoming a better person and him helping this indigenous tribe, like get their land back and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, or I could just watch more Mandalorian, which again, I enjoyed those two episodes of the Mandalorian. I watched because I think those were the best structured and well shot and Bryce Dallas Howard shot a pretty good episode, even though it's not the stuff I want. Right. It's still a decent episode of TV. It doesn't I, belong I, I in do this like, show. I, I do like episode five a lot. I, I, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. that. The, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I agree that episode five is very good. I think it's well shot. I think it's well structured. I, I think that's a really good episode. Episode six, I disagree though. I don't think it's a well structured episode. I think it's very boring. Sorry, I, sorry, I meant I meant episode five. I was right. thinking of yeah, I think just I, Bryce Dallas Howard. I think episode yeah. six is paced horribly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, I, I like really it. hate, I really hate the Grogu training sequence so much. Yeah. It's so boring. It means nothing to me. I don't, I don't care at all about it. And the thing that that I really I really wanted to go into Mandalorian season three with was a Grogu list in Jaren, which we've talked about already, but like, just to kind of give my thoughts on that, it's just the idea of like, 
you know, having a couple of episodes where he doesn't have have Grogu and he is dealing with the idea uh, of like maybe this this isn't what I want to do in life anymore. Maybe this isn't what I and having that arc be in season three and then having him decide that I want to go back to Grogu and then that's then that's a whole thing and that's yeah. great and that's that's the Mandalorian because the Mandalorian is about Grogu and Din Djarin. It's the lone wolf and cub. It's it's you know it's that's the story and so I'm like okay that's where that's supposed to be and but we get this he we. And even if it's just episode five in this show, even if they were just like, here's episode five, it's just, we tease the Mandalorian. What's the Mandalorian up to? And then he goes to help Boba Fett for two episodes. Cool. I'm okay. I thought it was going to be, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with I that. Was, That's cool. I was, the more I think about it, the more, this is this is what I would have wanted with Book of Boba Fett. I would have loved if, if Din Djarin just showed up as like, he would have been like the cliffhanger teaser hook at the penultimate episode where they're like, oh, we need help. And then you hear, well, you got some, and in walks Din Djarin, and he's there for the big fight of episode six, of the final mm-hmm. episode. I would have been like, yeah, Mando's back. That w- it's essentially a glorified cameo. What I'm okay really... with that. They like each other. Boba Fett and Mando, yeah, they're into each other. They're chill. But cool I just that. want, if I'm watching a show called Book of Boba Fett, I want, I'm, I want more Boba Fett. I just thought of a scene that I would have absolutely loved and also would have made one of my favorite characters who's not in the show all that much, but I love her to death, Jennifer Beale's character, the, the Twi'lek who uh, runs the sanctuary. Oh, God, so I she love got, her. She got God been, so hard. It would have been so nice to have Boba, have to have a scene where Boba goes to the sanctuary for a drink, just him, no Fennec, and they sit down and they talk. And they're like, look, like she says, look, I, I see what you're trying to do here, but it's not as hundred percent working. The other, like that, the other, that, that, I would have loved that, and it would have made her death much more impactful. She should have been that mayor character because I hate that mayor character. Oh, screw the mayor. I love no, 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 you're uh, talking, you're talking the major domo. Major domo. major domo. Sorry, major domo. Mayor. Yeah, yeah, um, I hate that major. No, domo. but I, I, I don't think she needed to be the major domo. I think Ben's right. I think yeah. like the major domo and the mayor. I, I think the major domo is played up too much. But that's what I, I, think, I still like. But I think that those characters are supposed to be. The, they're good at being the power structure they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I think Ben's right. I think a scene with Garza Flip where he sits down and she's like the one person who's kind of been giving him those backhanded compliments earlier, and she's like, "I get what you're trying to do, but." people aren't going to take this seriously mm-hmm. and you need to get that that's why and da, 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 because she she can like kind of read the room and voice of reason it and i think that would have been pretty good yeah like i seen... want to I, oh. I want to attempt to do something just for a moment we all know that this is a big problem this was a book of boba fett show and we went to two episodes of the mandalorian it definitely happened we know that i do want to just try and talk about what the content of those episodes specifically episode five but like the content of those episodes away from that fact like that is a problem for sure yeah i think that there's really good like stuff about the armor about what's happening with din and his relationship with his little set i love the visit to the ring i think like if this was mandalorian season three episode one or even if this episode happened as it did episode five but at the very end and i agree with the person who said this the pikes or cad bane blew up din's new ship so that it had to be repaired again and he couldn't leave to Grogu. And now he's in the fight. That would have been a better way to handle it. Yes, of course his immediate thought is I need to get to Grogu. That's the thing I need to do now, but he can't. Now he's stranded. Now he needs to get involved in this fight. I didn't think that would have been yeah. the way to do it. I didn't think the Pike Syndicate mm-hmm. would be taken out this season. I thought it would have been a mm-hmm. continuous thing. Or at least then you would have like another episode of building that conflict, building that thing. And now through the eyes of both Din and Boba, what is happening on the planet? What is the issue at stake? That's thoughtful though. And after Mm -hmm. The Last Jedi, they can never be thoughtful ever again. I... I agree with you, Sparks. I really like the content in episode five. Like, I like the the going to the armor and talking about the uh, the siege of Mandalore and seeing the the K two the K two droids in that sequence. It's all the really cool. Terminator scene. Yeah, that's so cool. I, um, I really like seeing the armorer talk about how but how um oh Katie Sackhoff's character shit. Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan. We find out that we find out that Pad Vizsla is the the grandson of. Pre. The pre Vizsla who had the dark saber for dark Wat- for Death Watch way yes. back when in the Clone Wars. And like- actually, actually, fun fact about that. So in in Mandalorian season one, he's there. It's yes. he's a character in Mandalorian season one, but he's voiced by Favreau. And the only yeah. way that you know that he's 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 a Vizsla is in the credits. And the idea is that he's that Favreau voiced him because he voiced pre Vizsla in Clone Wars. Exactly. His uh, his action figure is called Ham because he's the heavy armor Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, so I, that was really cool that they brought that back. I, I want to say something. All of those well, nuggets parts, are. Go ahead. Real, real quick, I just want to say every time the armor shows up, I get giddy because I freaking love her. Like yeah, every time good. she spouts like Mandalorian Kree stuff, I'm like, I'm in. 
I am just hundred percent in. Like when he shows up the dark Crazy saber, like religious and, zealot. And, and here's the thing, like I really like that fifth episode. I love the the N one. I love Beggars Canyon. Seeing it again from yeah. a new perspective. That's good. The fact that people, the, the fact that people have like moved into Beggars Canyon because it's not used for racing anymore. All all good stuff. Really love all of that. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is episode five works for me because the journey Din is on thematically ties to the journey Boba's on. Yes. Din is also lost. Mm -hmm. Din is also now kind of estranged and he's gone right back to where he started just like Boba did. And he's trying to be like, oh, but Boba's like actively like I'm forging a new path. And Din is kind of resistant to the idea that he can. And he doesn't want to acknowledge that he's changed because of his interactions with Grogu. Yeah. So episode five fits for me. It works yeah. because he is thematically tied to the same journey Boba's on. It's episode six where things go really off the rails. I, 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 want, to, I, want, to, I want to say more about episode five before we go. Yes, yeah, there's more to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I do. I, there's other things that I really like the, like the idea that like, um, uh, the armorer talks about, because as I started to talk about like Bo-Katan as being a cautionary tale, like they, like she, like the armor and her sect of the Mandalorians feel very strongly that the reason why Mandalore Mandalore fell was because Bo-Katan was was in charge of Mandalore of Mandalore, and it was because the of they they didn't follow the creed, they lost their way, and so like they're the they're the they're the idea that like that we're 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 the true Mandalorians because they they ruined us. You guys want to hear spicy? Specifically, they believe that Bo-Katan taking the dark saber when they weren't supposed to cursed all of Mandalore. And it has nothing to do with the fact that the Imperial Empire would have wiped them out uh, anyway. So it's yeah. all because Bo-Katan didn't follow ritual. There's, and this is not confirmed anywhere in any piece, but there are people speculating that the armorer might have sold out Mandalore after she lo after Bo-Katan took over because she hated her so much. Like basically sold her like the codes of security or whatever to like allow the invasion to happen. Cause like that's not true Mandalore anymore. I don't care what happens to it. Because this episode confirmed that would be wild. Or even if it wasn't then that, that part of that yeah. sect, the original part of the children of yeah. watched it. Like they they yeah. are they are fundamentalist crazy religious. Like this like I re I realize that they like, are descendants of the Death Watch. Yeah. So it's like, so like yeah. you you took your helmet off, you cannot be part of our creed no more. And I'm like, oh you're crazy. Which they all you're the crazy. more okay. they all the more hate Bo Katan for because Bo Katan used to be Death Watch. Yeah. And Bo Katan betrayed them. Yeah. I would it's so interesting because they're like they're not they're not Death Watch, but they're they're crazier than Death Watch. Like they're like Death Watch was already a crazy sect of Mandalore, they but then they're crazier like, than that. Because yeah. it's like it's like just if you heard like all the hearsay stories of what Death Watch did, and then you took that, you're you're like, oh right, so we'll follow their. But you're only hearing it all secondhand, yeah. and yeah. you're like, oh, we're gonna put all their shit together and we'll do it just the same. And so like it's 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 amplified even further. Real quickly, Ben, you don't know what Death Watch is. Because um, you haven't seen Clone Wars. No, I haven't. I've not. Uh, Death Watch was run by Pre Vizsla. It was a it was a Mandalore sect that was trying to destroy. It was trying to take back Mandalore from Bo Katan's sister, S uh, Satine. Oh, Obi Wan's wife. Oh yeah, uh, I see. I see memes about Satine. They have a baby. Yes. Watch, watch. They're gonna uh, have a baby. They have and they, uh, we've seen that kid. We and, know, like they haven't said it, but we've seen that. That kid. baby's in that show, you guys. And Bo Katan, Bo Katan was uh, what had betrayed them when Death Watch. I think around the time, or just before Death Watch was taken over by Maul, because Maul, Maul yep. took it over. What a um, cool! That's when it's like, oh, you guys. Maul, Maul cool. took over right after Bo Katan <sighs> left. They got the helmets, right. the Maul helmets. Oh, oh, yeah. That's how Maul like, had. That's how Maul had the dark saber. Oh, okay, because oh, I, I remember that. That's that was in, cool shit right that there, was in yeah. Siege of Mandalore, right? With Maul, Maul with the dark saber, or no? Maul doesn't have well, the dark saber when we see them in Clone Wars season seven. Okay, yeah, yeah. You, um, gotta, you gotta go back, but it's okay. it's good stuff. But but real quickly, I want to just one last thing about that, just to kind of catch Ben up, is that the is that Sabine, who's in Rebels, ends up with the dark saber and gives it to Bo Katan. Bo Katan does not does not win it in battle; it is gifted to her, and she takes it. And that's what the armorer is talking about when she says that she didn't follow ritual and that's why Mandalore fell. She didn't win it in Mortal Kombat. Which is also why it was probably why Bo Katan doesn't take it from Din at the end of season two. Um, they do a great job with the Darksaber having a weight to it that Din isn't used to. Yeah, it's cool. He's having to learn it. This yeah. is the same thing that Sabine encountered in Rebels, mm -hmm. having to learn from Kanan how to wield it properly. So I'm really yeah. glad that that's consistent and continuing mm -hmm. and some of the stuff happening is the same. I think that's all very well realized. I found Amy Sedaris to be pretty well utilized in this episode. I liked, uh, I liked her more than I did me, in the other episodes. Uh, at all. Yeah. Does bother me a little in the finale, but not here. Yeah. Um, Who's Amy uh, Sedaris? 
Pelly, the the, the droid, the, the droid the, lady, the engineer. Oh, the okay, 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 yeah. Oh, and we see a BD droid, which I think is cute. We see a BD droid, which was really cute, and I loved it. She also confirms that she bangs Jawas, so that's something we learned this week. <laughs> They're furry. That's great. I do like when she speaks Jawa. That's that's pretty. cute. Yeah, yeah. I, that was yeah, I like uh, you get you get Din getting pulled over by the space cops, and you're like, "Oh, come on, guys!" You see Appa fine. again. Uh, I, I okay. Every time from Kim's convenience, yeah, yeah, for Kim's convenience, I I love that actor. I'm just glad because yeah. when I found out that he was a huge Star Wars fan and he's now getting work in Star Wars, I'm like, that just makes me happy. Hey, you know, he almost had a show before Gina Carano screwed up. <laughs> almost, uh, and and probably still will. I think we're still heading in the direction of getting something that takes Rangers on related. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Cobb Vance is gonna do something, guys. Um, Anyway, oh, my guy. I was really uh, happy to see Timmy Olsen back. I really love him as a yeah, cop. Yeah, he's so good. Um, Ben, do you know who the other X Wing pilot was? Uh, I do not. It was Luke's body double from the end of Mandalorian season two. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's, that's, funny. that's funny. Oh, uh, uh, shit out. Uh -huh. All right, so one quick thing about Mandalorian. Right, so, I mean, I know we talked about the content of the show, but we talked earlier about like the puppetry and everything. You guys saw that shot of them like filming of uh, the Tuscan, uh, like the, the Tuscan uh, encampment in a parking lot, right? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I that is so cool. after a while. That the that void. I don't care what people say. That if you were able to take a, a vacant parking lot in the city of Carson, California, and turn it into the desert of Tatooine, I'm like, good on you. Well, that wasn't that wasn't using the void. The way well, there is one shot that I always find that I that I found very funny that does use the void. It's it's when they're it's when they're sitting around the campfire, and so like you get the sand and then complete darkness, and mm -hmm. like it's that is definitely just the the screens projecting just a black screen. Is it the void or the volume? Volume. The volume. Oh, the volume. Same thing. Either, um, either way, you have a bunch of screens and you have a bunch of sand in the middle of a parking lot and it's like, yo, this is the desert Tatooine and you turn the screen on it's like, oh shit, this is Tatooine. Just don't film up. You'll see those street lights and it'll be fine. Yeah, just if, don't look up. <laughs> if episode 5 had been our only detour away from Boba, I think we would have been fine. Again, like, I think it's very good content yeah. and I do think it is at least thematically tying him and we were still staying on Tatooine by the end. Yeah. And had he had to stay there, then I think we could have been okay. Doesn't Chan, I think we could have been okay with a single episode? Doesn't Fennec come like the end of the episode, like, "Hey, I need your yes, help." Yes, yes. But then he just goes to. Well, the... he says, "I gotta make. I gotta go somewhere first. There's a, there's a detour episode. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so that's the issue there. I now want to. You real quick. You know who I love? Gamorrean guards. Yes. The yeah. disrespect of them just ah, falling off the side of the cliff made me real sad. Not even a funeral for those. Just the boys. second when they like said, "Okay, sure, we'll we'll fight for Boba Fett and uh, Boba Fett," and then they earn and they earn and Boba Fett or Boba Fett earns their respect, and they're like, "Yo, Boba Fett's actually a much better boss but, than Bib or Jabba was." So we're gonna we're gonna die for this guy. Oh, yeah. puts, a, puts a Gamorrean into his back to tank. Boba's a good guy. He's a good boss. He's a good boss. Yeah. Gives him health benefits. Um, you know what? I would fight for Boba Fett if he the, hired me. <laughs> the tragedy of the Gamorrean guards to me made me think of, I was thinking of it the other day. It makes me think of the sequence in Kung Pao, Enter the Fist, where there's the part where everybody's injured and he keeps running between people and he thinks they're all dying. And then all of a sudden they're all okay. The dog's okay. The ch oh, the it's chief is okay. And the lady is yeah. okay. And he's like, yay, that surely would bloke because you see Chris Stanton, the mods, everybody you thought was in danger. Yeah. They're all okay. And then it's like, surely the Gamorrean guards. And it's like, oh. It's the Black Widow pose. <laughs> yeah, That's they're Gamora all just. Yeah. Gamora, Gamorrean <laughs> guards. They all, oh, come on. Um, Yes, uh, I think the Gamorrean guards are cool. I like that they're people rather than like the in big suits. They're just like muscle people in yeah. green paint. Now I think that works. Really I love, well. I love Chris Santon so much. I bought him on Fortnite. Yep. Looks so good in Fortnite, by the way. That's true. Uh, I wish yes. like he he could have been used more, I guess. But like he has I don't one even, scene, he has I don't one even scene care. Weird, but besides that, I like him. Uh, I don't I even care that he's not them. used more. I just care that by the end he's just nothing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, um, I think there I think there was a better way to handle his presence. I I do know now why he gets so mad at the Trandoshans. Is he racist? No, it's because Trandoshans are the main people who do who perpetrated the Wookiee slave trade when mm. the Empire took over Kashyyyk. Oh, it's true. And the Trandoshans I played... are the one who marketed in that, okay. and they're, that's why he hates them. But if you are just a casual viewer, yes. then in that scene, it just looks like he's mad that they're having a good time. Yes. <laughs> and so, I, and I went, all right, I played Republic. Um, if you play Star Wars Republic Commando, you go on to the Wookiee planet as, as the Republic Commandos, and you help fight uh, uh, Somewhere Wookiees. in my brain, I knew that, and they even try and hint at that in the audience, because earlier when a Trandoshan brings Boba tribute, he brings him a Wookiee pelt. But it it's just like in that scene, you're just not thinking about. There's no it. context. It's not. Clues. It's not contextually built. No. I it and 
all it took was this another like have a line and fix it. Garso Flip just mentioning that yes, they they ran the Wookiee slave trade, but like blah blah blah. That was they, they that was years that ago. Him into, into the arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, I really wish you guys were there when you saw him, when I saw Black or Sand for the first time because a I was like cool and I don't know how to pronounce his name, but b just the fact that they took that character because I really do like that character from the comic books and I'm like holy shit they are diving into the comic books, although they kind of go against comic. Go- comic book continuity later but that's neither here nor here nor there but the fact what when croissant showed up i'm like yes a badass book this is gonna be so awesome and then he kind of is like like the later the show goes it's like damn it and what continuity did they neglect you was lightsaber i told you i talked to you about this off air oh the right they they I mean, melted it that on is like me, yeah like that is like me stupid nitpicking wait Yoda. wait ben ben do you know they melted yoda's lightsaber specifically yeah, in a dark in um Charles Soule's run of Darth Vader, if they yeah. do mention that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I read he, an article about yeah, it. Yeah, they take yeah. um it's in the very first issue of this is and this is the what and this is the run where it takes place right after Revenge of the Sith. Like you, the first panel is him going no. Um, this is when Vader gets his own lightsaber and and Palpatine's telling him was like, do you know why a saber's red? And the the blue guy with the horns and the and the neck horns brings up Yoda's lightsaber and tosses it into a incinerator and incinerates it. So yeah, that's Luke, that's because they, that that's also uh because Coruscant is where Yoda lost his lightsaber. He yeah. didn't yeah, yeah, he yeah. didn't go pick oh, it up no, pick no, it back no, up. I, I I've read that comic. I remember that but I didn't remember if they specifically said it was Yoda's lightsaber. And you could also just argue your bullshit around of like that was a fake and Palpatine you could. wanted to keep Yoda's as a trophy or or Whatever. they just don't even look at the comics because it's true yeah. for most of the things that I they mean, make. Because I was talking to Brandon about this, and he was, and we were we were discussing how like sometimes Comic Continuity can go far or the one side, but the same. Oh, specifically, what I said was there's a hierarchy of canon, yeah, right? Exactly. You know, it's comics, book, TV show, movies, like anything, and anything above it can contradict the other, yeah. which is. A bummer because like the whole point of like the new the new comics is like it's canon look everything's true from a certain point of view Whoa! Um, uh it, <laughs> it's the most bullshit cop out anyway um i i want to jump backwards to some of the earlier episodes i want to talk about a couple of elements the oh let's talk, I about talk about both i want to talk about the twins and i want to talk about the fact that like if they were just mm. going to leave the next episode then oh. we shouldn't have introduced them at all well, it's pointless. So pointless. Like, oh, cool, we're getting twin Jabba's as like our villains. Oh, the, the whole oh thing is yeah. That, the whole thing is that yeah. it's supposed to be make me think that the Pikes are really scary because yeah. they leave because they're intimidated by the Pikes. They're like, yo, you know what? We were gonna do this, and then we realized who was here, and we're like, nah, peace. Uh, it's not worth it. And I'm like, um, I have just never not well executed. I have never not felt a threat so hard in my life than like Boba Fett because like they keep talking about the Pikes and the kid. And there's like there's like one shot of a scene where like a dozen dudes come off a ship, and I'm like, that's cool. That wow, big army. And I'm like, I've seen Boba Fett single handedly again nice. in the Mandalorian take on a bunch of dudes. So I'm like, what's like I don't understand this. Like I don't feel the threat. And I get it's a TV show and a budget, but like the Mandalorian seasons have had bigger action. Which set is pieces. why you needed Cad Bane. Earlier. Which is why you needed at least a central antagonist like a Cad Bane or even Kersantan until the end or something. Because Cad Bane's threatening. Yes, exactly. Because fish men are not threatening. Because I've seen you kill a bunch of them. Okay. I'm glad Chrysanthemum stuck around, though. I was yeah. I was worried that he would be gone when he just jogged off screen off to the desert. I, I really thought happy. it was weird that he even just like was like, yeah, just go be free, rather than just hire him on the spot right then. I'm like, just get him on board now. Like, why are we Arnie waiting was... until later? Yeah, I don't know. If this is just me trying to like grasp at fan service straws, but I was really hoping that Boba would acknowledge Chrysanthemum's like, look, you and I have done some things together. Yeah, what's how about for old time's sake, let's go back and kick some more ass? Like, ben, you know, ben called him Santo. I mean, you don't call someone yeah. Santo unless you've known them a while, at yeah. least a day. Exactly. But also, they don't, they don't, they don't like each other. <laughs> like that, like they, they know each other. They don't like each other. Yeah, they're not like friends. Not like Bosk. Where is Bosk? Um, <laughs> that's the only Trandoshan I want to see. <laughs> Um, died. Yeah, there, there <laughs> we some, don't know how, but Bosk died. <laughs> there was, you know, when you guys said the twins, I had to rack my brain. I was like, who the hell are the twins? What are they talking about? <laughs> and then you see the twin huts. I'm like, oh, I was, when we saw the twin huts, part of me was really hoping that they were good. It was like Boba versus Jabba 2.0, literal, yeah. or times two. But, um, but then they just like, yeah, like Spark said, they just, they just peace out. It's like, no, I want to see them fight. I want to see yeah. them go at each other. This would have been great. 
Uh, oh, yeah. Side note, I'm super glad I read Dune now because I now see all the parallels. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't even, they don't even hide it anymore. They're just like, yo, the spice is going to flow, you guys. So this is something Brandon and I talked about. I said it would probably come up on this episode that that, that book of Boba Fett specifically made me mad about, which is that, okay, so spice is a big deal. We get why, like, spice was introduced early on because George Lucas was directly making an homage to Dune. Yeah. Cool, I get it. Now we're at Book of Boba Fett. Spice is, like, the main thing that gives someone economic power in the galaxy. What is it? I have never seen anybody in any Star Wars property using spice. What is it? Even the elite classes. What does it do? Why is it so valuable? <laughs> well, let me pull at up. At this point... Frank Herbert's Dune. The spice melange is but that's the, the key thing, of like, life. But that's the thing, like, it's just, it's just not... It's present. a MacGuffin. In it's like, like a, it's like the lamest MacGuffin because mm -hmm. we only get any explanation of like what it is. It's just it's a thing that's expensive. That's that's valuable. Oh, and yeah. I do think the idea is that nobody knows. Nobody's been able to put anything continuity wise to it because it's just kind of like Han Solo is a spice runner. So, yeah. I, so just say just make it something. Right. Any just any. I told I told Brandon honestly like the the solution I is I wish on Canto Bite when we went there in the last show I we just saw them like all blitz like, out of their minds on spice. Ah, like, all right, spice. cool. I get who's buying it and using it. Fuck Great. Yeah, it's, it's the upper yeah. elite. I'm cool. God. I understand now why I never see like people running around on Moss yeah. Espa high out of their mind on spice. I get it. It's, it's a high end, high -end drug. stuff. Yeah. God. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just weird. It's just weird how much Star Wars property there is, and I haven't ever seen a single person use Spice once. Even it's when true. we go to Kessel, because I decided to... In comics, in cartoons, never. Even when we go to Kessel, because I decided to rewatch Solo, a Star Wars story, because of this. Uh, when we go to Kessel, uh, which is a Spice mine, they go for hyperfuel. They don't go for yeah. Spice. They don't go for the Spice at all. <laughs> yeah. You think, the hell? Would, you think you think Lando would be like, you know, this is like really expensive shit. Let's just put one crate on, I think, maybe. Um, anyway. Boba Fett has knee rockets, which are still cool. Doesn't yeah, really add does, yeah. adds his character too much at the but end. But it's a sick move when he's but like it's, blasting a dude. Again, and... like the visuals, uh, so I'm conflicted on the final battle because like you brought it up, like we're watching it and you were like, wow, this is just the Mandalorian season one finale all over again. It's like, oh, it's just people held up fighting a bunch of people in a building. Cool. And then before the Rancor comes out. Yeah. Um, I'm I Before the droid decaws come out. Before the Scorpionox come out. Oh, God. The giant droid decaws. Fuck those things. Can I, because you brought up the, the Rancor. Um, Chekhov's Rancor. Dumb. Um, so this is the biggest issue. I This is one of the biggest issues I have with the fact that we divert a, an entire episode to go to Luke Skywalker. Um, the, the fact is, when we get... Boba Fett being like, I will, I like this guy. I want to ride him. I'm so into this Rancor. I'm so, I love this Rancor. And like, this is my Rancor. And I'm like, cool. So we're going to get something, right? That's, that shows him building trust with the Rancor and learning to ride it, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, it's called and the then, finale. And then he just shows up riding the Rancor. And I'm like, well, that's cool. But I don't get any emotional moment. This doesn't, this doesn't have a payoff for me because I haven't oh, yeah. seen this built up. Yeah, the, I'm, payoff, the, I'm, the payoff of the episode is like, hey, remember that Rancor from with uh, Danny Trejo? Yeah, here it is, kicking ass and taking names. It's like, yeah, but I would have liked to. Have see, to you I know, impose that he's been training. With I that, have yes. to admit that on the scale of things that upset me about the show, Boba riding the Rancor was one of those things where I'm like, that's just cool. Like, un unfortunately, I agree. Like, I, agree. I, didn't, I, I didn't need more than what we got of the scene with him talking with Dan Trey. I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily need to see the relationship being see, built. My, I, I was happy to just see him do it. Uh, yes, I, I like the Rancor. The Rancor's fine. The, the problem I have is the Rancor then destroys half the town and then they just treat it like it's his best friend and like nothing bad happened now. There's, there's things, there's things about the Rancor that I want to keep talking about, which is the fact that like when we see Grogu t take down the Rancor, it's two puppets, which is really great. That looks yep. really nice. That's awesome. But the, the thing is like i that moment is cool and i like the moment i think you know i talked about I, I i think i tweeted this but like there are moments that i like in the finale that are that are cool and the rancor one is cool and like but the the issue for me is that we we don't see the rancor ever again and i would have liked to have at least seen some hint 
that he was with it. Like he mm-hmm. was, he was training with it and not necessarily, I don't need to see him learning how to ride it. Like he's learning how to ride a horse in some weird Western montage. I don't need to see that. Um, but like, I mean, I, now that you said it, I think I did need to see, see it. You know what? <laughs> you know, like, again, it, it's a thing where just like one simple thing could have solved it. Like somebody's bringing a giant saddle downstairs. Like what's that for? It's like, Oh, I'm working on something. Something I mean, like that. See, even, see, even that little thing. Yeah, we sure. do see him feed the rancor when he's got the, all the family heads at the table and the bites at the table when they're threatening him. Mm-hmm. And then, and he's like, Shh, that's okay. Or like, boy. Here's or like, your but, yeah. <laughs> but I also would have liked to have seen maybe like, like we, like we see Danny Trejo and him, and, and him like ending a training. Like, oh, this was good. Like the rancor is really warming up to you. Something like yeah. that. I don't need to see the rancor ever again, except for the finale. Thought, but something. Yeah. I thought we were getting more Danny Trejo for sure. At least one more scene. Yep. I, I was hoping I, for more Danny Trejo. I, I didn't need it, but I thought it was. I, I was, I was kind of glad that, like, I'm glad. I thought he was used as exactly the right character. Yeah, I think that was a very good choice of where to put Danny Trejo. Uh, I didn't mind that we didn't necessarily come back to him again. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have minded either way. I think I really like that. There's a specific reason. One of my favorite things about Return of the Jedi, which is one of my top Star Wars films, um, is. I've always loved the guy who comes up crying when the Rancor dies. Yes. And I'm like, his yeah. name is Melon Keeley. Thanks, Ken Knapsack. And um, <laughs> I've always loved that dude because yeah. I'm like, somebody loved that thing. And yeah. the fact that you learn that, like, it's because they imprint with the very first person they see, and that person is their person. And mm-hmm. so that was what Melon Keeley was to that Rancor. And like, they are connected. I think that's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that as detail. That was one of my favorite. Like, this isn't necessary in a show for Boba Fett, but I love it anyway. Yeah. That's why I was going to open more because, like, it was like sure, some of the yeah, most emotional yeah. stuff that we were getting. Yes, I, you know, I, I do agree with that. Yeah. I really hope when I rewatch Return of the Jedi, that scene where Luke kills the Rancor with the gate, it doesn't hurt because after seeing what. Because now it's like, oh no, because now I'm going to think of the Rancor from Boba Fett. It's like the imprint on the first one they see, and it's like, Great. It's, it's such a it's weird all about It's all about Melon Keeley. It's all about Melon Keeley being like, that yeah. was his pet. That was, that was. It's such a weird sequence, too. Because, like, if you think about it, not to go into like Shred of the Jedi, but it's such a weird detail to add to that. Like, yes. It always stuck to me. I'm like, they didn't have to do that. There's there's real power George in that, Lucas that non named character in that thing where, like, there was a guy who yeah. that was his buddy. Uh, and I always love that. I always love it. And then you got the guy who comes up because he's just there sobbing. You got the other guy who works with <laughs> It's okay because like these are your bad guys at that point in the movie, and it's like yeah. it's okay, but it's okay. And it's like, wow, did Luke like you do a baddie? Like return. Sorry, we're going on t- return of the ten- Jedi tangent, but right now I just gotta say this. You see the Rancor as this mindless monster who's there to kill Luke, and you don't want Luke to die. But at the same time, now after watching Boba Fett, and you see him riding the Rancor, kicking ass, and then Grogu puts it down. It's like, oh, Rancors are actually kind of cool. It's like now I'm gonna rewatch that scene. It's like, did the Rancor? No, sad. So well, it's now animal trying to kill your hero. So like speaking, I- speaking of Luke Skywalker, recast Luke Skywalker. Hashtag recast Luke Skywalker. Yeah, everywhere, plastered think- everywhere. I think I think we've now crossed that bridge where that won't happen, at least in live action. I agree, and I hate it because uh, enough people love it. That that being though, said, like this yeah. teasing up a conversation. Next week's topic for Fake Nerd Podcast. Uh, when you see this, it'll be the upcoming topic. Uh, go ahead and check it out because we're talking about all kinds of fallout of like the larger scope of what's happening in Star Wars because of the show. And go check it out there. One of the things is CGI Luke. So we're let's not go too deep on that here, but. Um, yeah, I agree. I thought CGI Luke was fine for the finale of Mando. Me too. When I assumed, like it would be it would be sparing after that. And even when episode six started, I thought it was still going to be sparing. And then we do the whole training sequence. I'm like, damn, it's really not. They're really just gonna milk that. Okay. And I've yeah. seen people I've s i have listen to people talk on a podcast and they're like, at this point, I'm ready for a movie where Luke isn't the star, but Luke is in most of the movie. He's yeah. like the secondary character. And I'm like, you couldn't even look at him when he talked most of the time. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, the CGI looked good, but most of the time we couldn't look at him open his mouth. Honestly, so like, yes, it's uh, we won't we can't get into it too much because we'll no. be here for another half hour. Right. But exactly. like, it's just a situation where it's a personal factor of like how much how much does this stuff matter to you? How much does whether an actor's dead or alive or like just using somebody's digital image without like them being there? How much does that bother you? And for a lot of the public, it doesn't bother them. Yeah, that's the, a simple so, fact. That's the a thing fact. is, it bothers. And it doesn't bother me. Like I'll be I'll be I'll be perfectly honest. Most of the time, it doesn't bother me okay. because it like I don't me. I don't mind Tarkin. 
I don't mind de-aging Sam Jackson and Captain Marvel. I don't you care. Don't mind Harold Ramis. I don't mind Harold Ramis. I don't. Oh, yeah. I understand that you do. I don't. Yeah. I get it. I don't mind that Harold Ramis is fucking dead. Like I don't get. I don't care. Like I don't mind a CG Luke Skywalker on paper when using as not a character. This is a character. This is a person that we are supposed to be feeling emotion from. If you're going to CG him, fine, make it look good. Make it look sparing. Make it look fine. I don't, but the voice is the one where I'm really rubbing up against. Oh, yeah. Because, that's a bad choice. Oh, yeah. Because that's a computer. And that's not a person anymore. You have taken away every aspect of that Luke Skywalker mm -hmm. is no longer a person. There is not a single person in that image because they have put over a real person, a CG image of, of an actor, and then they have fed into a computer lines of dialogue that is spewed out by an AI that cannot enunciate, that cannot uh, inflect, and you are losing, you have completely lost. It's the, um, there's that movie with, uh, they're, they're making a movie with, with um, James Dean. James Dean, thank you. They're making a movie in the future. It's that issue, right? It's that issue. Like you're not even you have taken away and and an, uh, you have taken away everything about a human performance from that role. And the thing is, look, I said it before. I said it before. Like I don't care about Luke Skywalker. Uh, fine, I'll 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 put that on my fucking grave. But like having the idea that you have taken away all of the emotionality, all of the warmth, all of the care from that character. Is that it's all gone? It's all gone from this performance. There is nothing left of Mark Hamill in this role. It is now just a computer. That that, that bugs me. Yeah. Th that I will agree with you. Yeah, uh, even though this is the I think the best looking like de aging deep fake thing we've ever. Oh, gotten. they left the uncanny valley and it freaked me out. Yeah, it's still the best looking probably one that we've gotten. No, that's what I mean. Is that yeah. they left it? Oh, they, they left totally it out. Left oh, yeah, the eyes look like, oh, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's scaring yeah, me. this is like they hired that deep fake guy. Yeah. and clearly paid off. And for like, it is unfortunate, and I don't know why they chose to do the voice thing because if the voice was just Mark Hamill, choice. then like I, I probably wouldn't be as bad. But like, yeah, it's the voice right. thing. Right, like, I wouldn't be yeah, as I mean, mad. I wouldn't yeah. be as mad if it was Mark Hamill. Yeah, if it was Mark Hamill doing the voice, I wouldn't be as like it still it still bothers me because like if you're going to make Luke Skywalker a main character in these shows, recast him. Yeah, you did it already with Han Solo. Just do it again with Luke. Like just do that. But like you 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 did the extra step of making it a completely computer character. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. This is like it happens every couple of years where like technology is like, oh, is this okay? And this is definitely one of those moments where it's not. Uh, and I think John Favreau is guilty of this a lot of the time where he'll like, he'll have something new technology in front of him. And I, this is what happened with Jungle Book into the Lion mm, King. Was yes. that he's like, I could do this with Jungle Book. That means I could do it with Lion King. We don't need people. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, even, even the people who love the Luke stuff, even they can say like, yeah, the voice is a little weird. So I hope, uh, I hope that backlash will, will help. Cause like and definitely I, like the deep fake future is here. Unfortunately. Yeah. I want to, I want to real quickly. I, cause I, I feel very bad about something that I said earlier, because again, the, the Luke stuff really works me up and I, and I deeply apologize. It is not, uh, it's not a reflection on, on, on you guys. It is just personally, just my own bubbling nature. Um, I said something about Harold Ramis that I feel was very disrespectful. Um, I want to just real quickly just add an addendum to that. There is something different about the Harold Ramis ghost sequence for me in Ghostbusters afterlife that I know that you guys will disagree with, but I just want to, make it clear that to me because it is an unspeaking ghost role that is temporary that is not there for five minutes um that that that's that's fine that's kind of a glorified cameo just to kind of give characters closure that works for the story this to me is the step too far sure this to me is the step too far mm -hmm. i get you I, understand. I mean like you brought it up earlier but i think even in star wars canon like the one that has written that line before is tarkin because yeah. that's not a glorified cameo. That that's He's speaking. That's a character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And I I have my own feelings about that and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it, it it it's it's mixed at best. And there was a part at the time where like more than anything, I was just impressed because yeah. I didn't think they could do it. Uh, and I remember that being part of the feeling the first time I saw Rogue One is I'm like I didn't think we were here. Yeah, it's, it's uh, terrifying. And it, and it was scary. Um, yeah. The Carrie Fisher one in Rogue One bothers me less because I would. That, Carrie Fisher was alive at the time and said that was fine. Mm -hmm. And that that was all like, and she didn't really, she had like a line and Carrie Fisher had recorded the line. And I'm like, that's, that's whatever. You're just making her look young. Whatever. Help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's five. That's like less than five minutes. 
You're right. And that's, 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 that, to me, that's a different thing than that's more in, going yeah. in the direction of what you're talking about with the Harold mm -hmm. Ramis thing. Yeah. Uh, it, but like Tarkin, Tarkin is the thing that's like closer to this Luke thing where it's like, I'm getting the willies about it, but, it, but it, it's definitely the computer voice. It's the fact that Mark Hamill is out there. The fact that Mark Hamill is a voice actor and is out there. And we're like, nah, I'd rather make a computer say it. Um, and I'm like, I'd rather he sounded kind of old. Yes. <laughs> and look young than sound like a computer who doesn't understand emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Let's even talk credit, about I'll oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say they even credit Mark Hamill, but the more I look at it, it's like, was Mark Hamill even there? No, no, no. he himself no. said no. There's no. no Mark Hamill in that role. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And it was uh, yeah, let's get off of that. <laughs> um I I wanna in episode six, there's a moment that I really, really liked. It was very cute to me. It's very small. You guys might not have caught it. Um, but maybe you did, and it's great. Uh, when he lands the N1 fighter, the shot of Mando getting out and it panning around, R2 is over there. They position the camera so that R2, for a moment, is in the droid port of the yeah. N1, just like he was in episode one. Really cute moment. I thought that was really nice. I really like it. Um, Good shots. Just just like, there's some things, even in the worst episodes, that I'm like, that's that's real nice. I, I like the frog stuff. With, with Luke and like that's cute and stuff but then when he just does the Empire run with the backpack I'm like oh I've seen this before sure I'm like yeah. that this one wasn't I, yeah. so, um, so. Oh, one of the scenes one of the scenes I actually really love about not episode six but this is earlier was the scene where Boba teaches the the Tuscans how to ride speeder bikes yes great I love but that scene I, I'm not <laughs> we have so many things we're talking about there is not a single thing in episode two I don't love yeah that's not my, that's, a single yeah. thing in episode two I don't love it's, it's the appearance of the huts yep. the appearance of the black chrysanthemum it is building that town feeling it is the <laughs> building up history. the Tuscans it is the entire history with the Tuscans yep uh him going the train on his, lizard, his lizard drug the trip train. that goes in his brain and then he's like comes out and he's like oh, I thought that was part of the dream um all of that amazing no notes perfect that's why it went Pew! absolutely After that. incredible yeah. episode uh i could go on and on about it forever that is pretty much the single episode where i wish i'd done just a podcast episode about that episode the We're train just, sequence um, the train sequence is is like the best action scene in the rodriguez episodes uh yeah. it's it's one of the best action scenes that, like, there's that part where like one of the pikes pops up and then gets pulled down and it's the warrior and the warrior looks at boba and it's like it's time and it's like yeah. it's like, like manic droid uh yeah. driving the train that's just <laughs> insane and then bursts out the window incredible oh he jumps episode. out the window yeah, yes yeah. incredible episode yeah. loved it the fact that boba has to use the gaffy stick in order to stop the train like I love all of it. I think it's incredible. One more line is like the pike is like, what does spice look like? Like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you're right. Perfect, perfect episode of episode two. But uh, man, uh I, I, knew... uh, I I uh, episode six, um, the stuff about the training, the only thing I do like about it, I wish we weren't watching it in this episode, but the thing that I do like about it is that it does feel very in character with Luke that it's like all I know how to do is repeat what was done to me. Yeah. And I don't really know how to do this better. So he's like, this is That's how fair. you lightsaber. That's and fair. I'm like, this is good. This is a Luke who hasn't quite read all the texts. The sacred this is a text. Luke who hasn't figured it all out. This is a Luke who's just kind of like, I kind of only know how to do certain it's things. It's super, it's, it's, it, it is cool. Because of someone who loves The Last Jedi, it is really nice to see, oh, he's on his way to ruining his life. Which is a sad thing to say, but like as someone who likes emotional he's journeys. Guy, he's a guy who didn't learn all the right lessons. Yeah, so he's on yeah. the way to same, make the same mistakes again. Like, And I thought like, yo, with the amount of cameos that happened in 5 and 6, I fully expected, and I'm not joking, I thought young Ben Solo was going to show up. Or like old Lady Kira, or like Sabine. Just anybody in the universe would show up, and I'm so thankful that they didn't. Because it would have been way too chock full of shit. Uh, but I, but I fully expected like Luke's Jedi training stuff begins here. We're gonna get a ship with Alden Ehrenreich, maybe, probably not. But like a like a young. Well, so here's the question. Guy. Here's the question. So if we see the trio again together, yeah. because let's be honest, they want it. They, because they love putting action figures together. Yeah. Do we see Alden Ehrenreich with a deep fake Luke? I think you just have him just be him, just de age like a couple years, because like he deserves he deserves everything in the world. I think we I see. Think I think at I this point we see a, we see Harrison Ford. I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think we'll do it in live action. I don't think Harrison Ford will come back to Star Wars. Harrison Ford, no. Alden, please. No, but you don't have to. I was listening. I was. You don't have to bring back Harrison Ford. You could just deep fake up. Mark Hamill didn't come back. I don't. I don't think Harrison Ford would say okay. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, Carrie Fisher's family already feels like they, they did what they did because of the necessi necessity they felt to the story of what she wanted Rise to do Skywalker. with the Rise of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. But that, that's it. There, there, I don't think there's going to be any more live action recreations of Carrie Fisher. I hope not. Yeah. I, yeah, I highly doubt it. Uh, at least um, her name is escaping me, but her daughter has been pretty Lord. that she doesn't want to see it again. Lord. Like it was an emotional moment and there was a reason to do it. They felt with Rise of Skywalker. It was very important to her that she was there because that was supposed to be Leia's story. Mm -hmm. But that's it. That's the end. There should not be another live action appearance of Carrie Fisher. And I don't think Mark Hamill wants it for her either. So then I go back to like, so then I go back to recast Luke. So then you have a new cast of these original characters that are able to actually be characters and, 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 and have the character, because you've already done it with Han Solo. I like, agree. You can just I, do it again. I think, I think the tough, the, the difference, I think where they find, I'm not saying that this is right or wrong, but I think the logic of why they're more okay with the Alden Einerreich uh, recasting and the Donald Glover recasting is because they're supposed to be younger versions of the version you already see in a movie you're watching in continuity. And it we're more accepting generally this is a general idea we are more accepting of seeing a different actor portray a younger version than a different actor portray like an older middle same version of a character is the logic behind it so because this would be post return of the jedi it should look like mark hamill if you're watching me it should look like harrison ford it should look like so i think that's the logic that they're rubbing up against of why they wouldn't do that uh, my personal opinion is what, if, if I want to see stories that involve that trilogy, that trio of characters at this period of time, I want an animated show. Me too. That's the easiest solution. That's the solution I prefer is I'd rather just have an animated also the show comics so that are I can there. see all of them and the comics are there. Yep. I'd rather just have that. I don't really want to see the trio in live action. Their story got told. Carrie Fisher's <laughs> gone. Like I'm done. Yeah. I, it's over. I, don't uh, I think it. I think this is. I think there. I think there is more to tell with the trio post Return of the Jedi. I. 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 I and I. And I agree with Sparks when I say that. When, when I. When I say that I would like it animated. Then I, the only thing is, I just don't think that the people who are getting who are who are, who are dictating the story of the post Return of the Jedi is are interested in ever doing animation ever again. So I'm just curious. Like we are going to. Like I. We are going to see Luke again. And at that point, we're probably going to see see Han and Leia again. And that, so that's what I'm worried about. I would just prefer it if Alden Ehrenreich showed up again as so, Han, and they recast yeah, I, everyone else. I, I I feel you. I think of the trail of the of the trio. Luke is the one we would see the most anyway, because he is the Jedi tied to everyone. Because Han's, yeah. Han's Han's with Leia and Leia is trying yeah. to create the new Republic. And honestly, like, unless like, they're going to make a show that's actually about what they're trying to do with politics, which yeah. I doubt, because they'll have to get specific yeah. about things, then we don't. And and, and that case, in that case, I always go back to my 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 desire for an animated show following the original following the original trilogy. Yes, and I'm and I'm with you. I would I I'm not against seeing stories telling what happened with those three characters post Return of the Jedi before Force Awakens. I'm not against seeing all that yeah. in some form. I just don't think it's going to happen in live action. I don't think it can anymore. I th I I I I think I think the live yeah. action ship even with what they're doing with Luke right now has sailed. I don't know if I oh, agree, yeah. but I because like you're not you're not going to have this CGI computer created Luke next to someone that's not Carrie Fisher Leia, but you can't do Carrie Fisher Leia. Yeah. And, and then all the Aaron, right? And Harrison Ford won't agree to it. So yeah. like it's it's it is what it is. But yeah, it, it's too weird. And I, I, and again, I I'm with you. But I just, I just don't trust that that is not the direction they're trying to go in, and I don't trust that that is not something they're going to try to do, and I don't trust that it's something they're not going to do. I, I, I understand that there's a pessimism to it that I totally, I get. Um, this is definitely like more for the CGI <laughs> Luke stuff we want to do <laughs> next week. But um, uh, I, I fundamentally, from everything we've learned, I don't believe that Carrie Fisher's family will say it's okay. I don't believe Harrison Ford will say it's okay. So it doesn't matter what Feloni or Favreau want to do. Mm -hmm. That is a dead issue. We don't see them in computer-generated CGI. I so hope you're they right. either so they'll have to go in their own direction of whatever they decide they want to do. I also am not convinced that Filoni's done doing animated shows. I think he'll want to get back on that train eventually. I just don't know when that will be. Yeah. I um, I, I, I I I mean this sincerely. I sincerely hope you're right. Yeah, I, I I have no reason to be that. To me, there is there is one silver lining in being done with the Grogu with Luke story right now, which is that we don't have a reason to go see Luke. Yeah, it's true. Um, so unless they just want to show him building his temple, which you don't need to do in the Mandalorian, unless right. we see his, him in Ahsoka. Yeah, right. But it, I think even there, there's. Uh, oh, he'll I show wanna, up in I Ahsoka. Wanna, yeah. No, no, I don't know that he will. I do want to highlight that I think there's something actually pretty smart 
even though I don't like how it's all done in the episode six of Ahsoka, which is that everything Ahsoka has said has been Ahsoka saying like, I didn't think that the right path for Grogu was to train with Luke. I said that he should get to make a choice. Mm -hmm. He made a choice. Who he chose was to get trained by Luke. Does he really want that choice? I don't control the whims of others. Yeah. It doesn't matter that I don't necessarily agree with the way Luke's doing things. This is them walking the path they feel they need to walk, and I'm letting them do it. I saw people like being very anti soka like, oh, she turned against everything she ever... No, like, no she's very no, much she walking. Didn't. She's very much saying, like, I'm welcoming people to walk the path that they want yeah. to walk, even if I don't agree with it. She's like, them live their lives. Yeah. I think I think she very much conveys that she kind of believes maybe the best thing for Grogu is to be with Mandalorian, but she's not going to be the one to enforce that or say it. Yeah. Uh, right. And I think that's very valuable. I think Ahsoka will be explored in a pretty good way, and it's not necessary for Luke to be in much, if any, of her series going on with Thrawn because Luke's doing his own thing and she's doing her own thing, and just because they're both Jedi doesn't mean they have to be partnering up for stuff. Yeah. What I will say about that in a caveat is that if I was going to get a Luke and Ahsoka reaction, I sure do, conversation, I sure do wish it was the one where they talked about who she was in relationship to his dad. I would have liked to have seen that moment, but instead we're getting like that happened off screen. We'll just reference it. I do like that she's like so much like your father, and there, there's that kind of moment between them that it's nice. It is nice. Yeah. Um, but. I, I think that Ahsoka is very much still Ahsoka, and I think there's very much that character is still maintained in the way that they decided to write that, and I think that's pretty good and everything. Something we haven't talked about at all that I want to um, jump backwards to now is the mods. I was going to bring it up, because I love the mods oh. until I don't. <laughs> uh i love the mods um I, the, the last I, episode did a lot of damage for me i'm gonna be honest honestly not for me i i yeah. pretty unabashedly love the mods i at least as like uh i totally get people's reactions when they first show up and they've got their pretty color vespas and everything and turn the place into moss vespa which is a great joke um <laughs> i i fully get the reactions to it to me i only wish that those characters were explored more. And that's pretty much my main note about them yes. because I yeah. like them. I like the idea of them. I like the idea that they are people who prioritize the ability to augment their bodies, that they are the rebellious youth, that the way that they express that rebellion is by having the shiniest, prettiest things on Tatooine that we've ever seen because everybody else on the planet has just kind of given up and accepted their situations. But they are specifically introduced to us for stealing water. What do you think they're stealing the water for? To clean their bikes. To clean their bikes. That's their priorities. <laughs> I love that about them. Yeah. I love their shiny color Vespas. It's a, it's a, it is a fu in the whole state of the town that they have them and that they're so colorful and flashy. So I have no problem with their appearances. I think they're so cool. Um, Darth, I love, Darth Vader's a mod, y'all. Stop being crazy about. I mods. love the idea of the mods. I love the idea of uh, who they are. The only problem I have is that they are underexplored characters, and they have the worst action scene in Star Wars history. But I don't blame them for that. I blame no. I blame the volume. So no, but this it hurts. is yeah. like it that, that that chase, that speeder chase scene where they go after the major domo. Bad looks bad, has no weight. Yeah. Um, I can believe it, guys. They cannot, um, they clearly can't film things like that in the volume. It doesn't work, and I think they knew it didn't work, so they turned it into a comedic chase. If it was, it wasn't knew funny, it could work. right? But they, but they do so much crashing into things and little comedy bits because of how he's passing through. Yeah. And I think they, they altered it because they realized they just couldn't make it look cool. But I, you go back to we've this seen is a great chases example. in other solo, solo has a fantastic the beginning speeder chase. Yeah. Uh, this was nowhere even kind of close. And this, this, I do think this is fundamentally just, this doesn't work on the volume. We have found the limits of the volume right now. You can't go super things fast. Like, <laughs> things like on the ground, we on can't the ground. in space, yeah. but we can't do it here. We can't do it in this kind of stars. environment that it's trying to do. It doesn't work. Yeah. 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 I agree. I agree with all of that. I, 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 I like the mods in, in practice. I just don't think they were executed very well. The mods, I was, I, I, I'm indifferent on the mods. I don't hate them. I don't love them. But in the, the more you st you told me about them, sparks like, okay, yeah, they do have a point. But yeah, uh, that's very they, that's, kind that, of um, kind of related to them. You meet um, Thundercat, who is the mod that repairs. Oh my Stenic. god, I love Thundercat. Uh, He's a great musician. There's something specific I love about that. I love the opening of that because it feels so uncharacteristically Star Wars in the best way. I'm glad that Star Wars is reaching a place where we can branch out and have different avenues and tones and feels. There's nothing about that that feels like traditional Star Wars, but it's still Star Wars, and I really liked that. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite things Robert Rodriguez does, does in the whole series is that I'm like, this is new. This is yeah. new feeling for Star Wars, and I like it. When when <coughs> the mod Thundercat is working on... Uh, Shan, right? Fennec? Is he working Fennec on Shan, Fennec? Fennec, yeah. Um, 
this music. Before that, he's working on like putting a spinal yeah. device on uh, someone, and then he's just like, "I'll just stop doing that. Hold on, let me save this life." Got... And I'm like, "You're doing something with her spine." <laughs> Boba's got more money, but like the music, it's like a montage of him fixing Fennec, and it's just like, bow, tickle, bing, tickle, bow, tickle, bow, and I'm like, "This is sick. This is so like not Star Wars, but it's like it's perfect because like again, it's just like I haven't seen it before, uh, and it bums me out because like I like all that mod stuff, but then in the finale." Like I, they try to give them like character, like character stuff, and I'm just like, oh, I just don't think it works. Like specifically and it, the and two it, ones, like the redhead and and like the black dude. I'm well, yeah, because like, the others are just extras. Because you have, but the, these guys are might as well be glorified extras. Because like I'm a British lady, that's my character, and I'm like, ah. Uh... Yeah, the the final action sequence really bugs me because it's not very well done. Like there's the choreography of it, the staging of it, it's not good. There's some good oh, stuff with Mando and what. The logic of it, the logic, the logic of, of it, just firing blasters into these clearly force field things that none of them are able to do anything for against. minutes. Yeah. The, the Boba Fett, the Boba Fett Mando team up fights are pretty cool. Um, oh, I really th- that whole that whole sequence where they make their stand and it's like going around them as they're like covering each other and stuff starts cool, really great. Starts great. Yeah. I have no notes. That's a great action scene. Yeah. But when, but like the Freetown people don't matter, the mods don't matter kersantan ends up not mattering like there's nothing in that sequence that, as far as as far as like all these people shooting at these at these bubbles like it doesn't matter there's nothing there it, that works it is cool to see like giant droidicas like oh cool like they did make bigger versions of them why wouldn't they uh, um i think i think part of the problem honestly lies in not uh fleshing out the town and these characters the mods etc it's better. my people in the earlier episodes again this is the detriment of episode six deciding to spend most of its time with luke and grogu doesn't really work because we needed to know these characters better specifically like the mods we need to know better i'm shocked that lothal peel never comes back he's the guy who originally gets boba to go after the mods because they're taking his water oh um, steven root steven yeah, yeah. Root, yeah. Okay. uh the, the fact that like he never comes back because you definitely have a vibe like he's gonna kind of screw boba over with the pikes later because he's bad that boba didn't help him and that never happens great note with him uh essentially what he tries to do is he says i'll give you double the tribute if you go take care of the mods for me and i'm like dude you just tried to make him a bounty hunter <laughs> he's not a bounty hunter anymore man stop it he's a dime um which is a really good again like it's good moments like that that represent like people mistreating boba in his new position of power but that's just not taken all the way to the extent that it's supposed to. It's not explored enough. The mods aren't developed enough for what they're supposed to be. I really do love the idea of them. I love the idea of a rebellious youth that has nothing they can do yeah. to lift themselves out of their situation. They can't go off planet. They can't find any work. There is no work to do for them. They are just left to kind of hate society. Um, it makes sense. It works. Uh, it I is just... cool to see like like the next generation, like a younger generation. Because like when you think of Tatooine, you just think it's of like really... everything's dusty. But like, what if you just clean something it's right really, like it's really nice to see right and like even then that you're criticized for that you're ostracized for that yeah. like you're ostracized for wanting to improve your life yeah um it's really nice to see something that is i feel actually representing the youth of today in star wars which is kind of looking at everything and being like everything's kind of stacked against us and they're sucks. trying to go back to prequel looking shit Yes, like like, how, like the, yes, exactly. Everything old is new again, right? Ooh. And I, and I think that really works. I think that as a concept would have been really wonderful if we actually wanted to spend the time fleshing out Mos Espa and making Boba Fett's like new terrain matter. I would trade all of the Absolutely. Fennec Flynn flashback episode to develop Fennec and these characters in the modern day and know what the town is doing, what the people's relationship to how the economy is oppressing. Them I still can't believe works. Like, this is the town that yeah. ran slaves in through trade all the time this is where anakin came from like th- that's this place that's a good point it's, it's no. just like it, you you have all the material to explore these avenues of how these people are kind of just stuck and boba wants to give everybody the power to lift themselves up that is supposed to be the point it's just not fleshed out it's, it's not taken all the way to its full idea and i and i the mods are one of the biggest ones where i'm like i feel like you really had something here yeah i feel like you had something where you were speaking to the moment specifically speaking to the moment right now and you could have pushed this all the way there are so many spinoffs <clears throat> coming out in the world like it's not like i need a mod spinoff but like that avenue of like what what is like what is the youth in star wars doing like what is like someone who's like eighteen and like wants to be an advent like like on you know what I mean honestly like, like they give me no faith to make me think that they would do this but if we got another season of Boba that's what I'd want what I'd want is to explore those characters I'd want to explore okay so he 
push the pikes back. Now he's in power. How is Boba making power work better for everybody? Mm -hmm. And how are these characters? I loved the idea going into this of a, of a star Wars show where we stayed on a single planet. Yeah. And if it had just kept episode five as our one detour, then still most of it would have been on tattooing. We would have just had that one moment at the beginning where he left and then just make everything about how, what if we just zero in like star Wars is so macro. What if we just go really small and how are things functioning here? How are people on the outer rim suffering? I I've said it before, like like this was the this was the period of Star Wars I was the most excited about, like post Return of the Jedi, like it's the Wild West, uh, and that's what. And now again, looking back, like I like the Mandalorian more in retrospect. Especially like, in this is a rim. bad version of the Mandalorian. Is this Boba Fett show? Because like half of it was about Luke and shit, right? Like I I I mm. love this era so much, and like there is so much. This has so much promise, and like the mod stuff, I love so much. I mean, this is this is essentially going back to the things we talked about when Cobb Vanth was introduced in Cobb season Vanth. two of The Mandalorian, and he was talking about how Mos Pelago was suffering, and we're like, this is the stuff we want to explore. And Boba Fett just had the opportunity, but the show didn't go that's, far. That's what I was really into when the, when the show started. Like I, I talked about like like my favorite time of, of Star Wars is between three and four. Like I really like exploring that era, but. Like this era has has is so ill defined, is so ill explored that you could that you really can do anything. And I am interested in seeing how the Republic has rebuilt itself, what it's what um what the Outer Rim is like at the time. And so like having Boba there to kind of dealing with that aspect of it of what Tatooine has been suffering from now that the Empire is gone, now that the Republic is rebuilding, like you know that having Boba be that kind of voice of what this is happening, and, and like you said, Spark having that micro scale. Like that's what I, I enjoyed, and we were getting that in the beginning, in a, in, a, in a sense, and then we just drop it all, and like now, it, and I, now I just go back to like I would have rather have just like like I still want that New Republic show, like I want yeah. a New Republic show dealing with the New Republic and what that's doing, because like am I not getting this anymore? Are, are, is Star Wars just not interested in doing this anymore? Are they just well, interested yeah. in shoving action figures together? Yeah. Right, because it's a big bummer. Because what we what we knew got established with Cobb Vanth in the first episode of season two of The Mandalorian is that it didn't matter when the Republic fell and the Empire rose to Tatooine. Nothing changed because yeah. they never gave a shit about the Outer Rim to begin with. Yep. So yeah. everything's kind of still just been crappy. Boba Fett is the first person coming in saying, "I actually want to change." I care things, mm -hmm. and it's really just sad that we didn't get to like it's all just surface level of that idea. Like, yeah, I know like with what we've been given, sure. Boba's going to change the planet. Things are going to be better. The pikes aren't there. The spice trade is now off of Tatooine. Boba has effectively done that. Cool. Um, but what that means, the weight behind that wasn't delivered well enough throughout the story. And like, it's great that Cobb Banth lived. I love that guy. Uh, I love when Timothy Oliphant got to appear as him. Yeah. Uh, I love his, both his scenes. I was so great. scared he was dead. Oh, you I knew was... like when Cad Bane come Bro. up, you're like, dude, you did. Like, you don't know it, but you did. Because <laughs> he, shoots, he, shoots, he shoots Cobb once and then he shoots his sidekick like seven times. Right. And you're like, oh, that guy's really dead. That guy's like, really that dead. It's like, the there's season, the person who pulled fire. Yeah, yeah. There's a chance that Cobb lived, but there's no chance the other guy lived. He did. Cad Bane's really cool. Like, I think he's he's done really well in the show. I wish I just wish he was there more for me to care about. I more. agree. But like, mm -hmm. he like looks cool, has a great presence. I'm glad it's the voice actor. As someone, as someone who like knows about the unproduced Clone Wars script, about uh, who knows about their history of Clone Wars, who likes Cad Bane, like 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 you guys, uh, Sparks and Ryan, uh, Sparks, Sparks and Ryan, like the the ending of seeing Boba kill Cad Bane, that is cool. It's a cool moment. I've like I've always wanted to see that. Like it's got a good like moment for Boba Fett. Tomorrow Morrison's good at, at it. But like as in this show, it doesn't give me the emotionality that I was looking for. It doesn't quite reach that moment that it should. It's not it's not as extreme, but it's the kingpin problem from Hawkeye. Yeah. If, if, yes. If, if, kingpin's, if kingpin's actually dead from Hawkeye, that's what this situation is. You introduce yeah. him and then immediately kill. This is again like I think the Cad Bane thing would have worked just fine if Cad Bane had just been introduced in the season. He still could have died at the end, and I think it all would have felt like you know we built up to it, and here's the conflict of more him and Boba. And I yeah. love that Boba the way he beats Cad Bane is by using his Tuscan training. <sighs> like that that's the thing that wins him the fight because that shows that that's who he's he's different. He has changed. He has Sneak evolved attack. in a way that Cad Bane couldn't predict, and that's awesome. Yeah. I do love that that's the core of that idea, but I agree. Cad Bane, as he's delivered in this version, even though I know that history, just like I know the Netflix shows for Kingpin, this isn't satisfying for who that character is and the weight of what that relationship should be. He needed to be brought in sooner. Yeah. Because yeah, again, like he gets taken out by our hero, which again makes sense for the show. Because most people watching it, 
don't know who Cat Bane is. No, but like, again, yeah. if you establish him from episode two and show him killing a bunch of people, then you're like, oh, this guy's a threat. Even four. Even four. Honestly. Yeah. Something. Something, Something. before the pen before the ending of episode six. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because like I like the stand I like seeing the standoff. Because I like Cad Bane. I think he's cool. He's a cool bounty hunter. Like yeah. I, I like I like seeing the two of them stand stand down and I like seeing him pushing the buttons. And I thought. That by the end of the episode, like it would matter that the Pikes that he reveals that the Pikes killed the Tuscans. Like he that's that that's something to throw him off the guard. Insignificant. But it it's doesn't so matter at all. And it's just like, come on, guys. Remind yeah. me, Brandon, is, is this right about Cad Bane? He has the 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 tubes thing to stop him from getting force choked by Jedi. Isn't that isn't that like a thing? Isn't that true? Because I've I read feel that. like that is true. That is, yeah, because like he, he got a surgery so he can fight Jedi and like his vocal cords or something. He can't get force choked. Like that's, I rem- a thing. I, like that's, that's clicking in my head. That's something that happened because like he, he grew up at the time of Jedi were everywhere. So yeah. it uh, makes sense. I, I watched like a video or read an article or something like, why is Cadman look like Darth Vader? And it's like, he can fight Jedi. And then I watched like a clip of him fighting Obi-Wan or whatever. I'm like, ah, oh, it's sick. Yeah. I don't, I also will admit that I'm not 1000% convinced that Cad Bane's dead. I, I understand that it's very likely. There's something about that shot where if you pay attention, His thing's blinking. It's it's making a ticking sound like it's still running. So I'm like, could he be saved? I guess I'm kind of like ambivalent about it. I think I think it's fine for Cad Bane's story to end here because there's still plenty of Cad Bane's story you could explore beforehand, whether it's through comics, cartoons, whatever. There's a lot there. there, yeah. There's plenty yeah. of story to still unfold with Cad Bane, and that's fine. Show I, and Bad Batch. The execution of this show, exactly. Just in the execution of the show, a lot of people are saying in Bad Batch season two, we'll probably see Boba and Cad Bane together. Um and I'm like, yeah, that'll help. But like, I wish it's that later. this season, it's I wish later. that this season had that stuff uh, that that we were wanting, and could have made Cad Bane like really feel like he landed. Yeah, I want to say something that you'll probably say is meant for next week, but I I, I feel strongly I want to say this. I'm not interested in the Ahsoka show at mm-hmm. this point. Come, I don't, I don't much care for at two two times now. I've seen this girl. I don't much care for her as Ahsoka. Um, I don't now that now having watched Boba Fett, it feels like Star Wars is threatening me that just at any moment in their shows, an episode could just be a different episode of something else that is unrelated. And like, I don't want that. I don't want to see that. So like at this point, like I'm just not interested in that direction. I'm not interested in seeing any other shows set in this era. Um, and I hope that, and like, I'm, I'm kind of, I, like I feel like the show is the show has lost my trust with Star Wars. Like the show has broken the trust that I had with Star Wars that I could be watching a show and it's just about it's just about the character of the show. Like yeah. now I'm now I'm retroactively worried about like Obi Wan, uh, even though I know there's going to be like other things. But like more specifically, I'm worried about the Filoni Favreau stuff. No, I I I'm not I'm not quite there with you, but I definitely after this finale, I'm a little more trepidatious. I still for sure. yeah. I still trust Filoni. I really do harp all this into Favreau's. He did write uh, all of it. Writing, almost, yeah. uh, that's true. Just, yeah. I think he mishandled the idea of what he wanted to go for, or he didn't see all the way through, or that this show was just too rushed and they should have taken more time to bake the idea. Yeah, all of those things probably are true. The main thing for me is that the only real quickly before you get off that, the only thing that I that I put on uh, that I say about Filoni, the reason why I add him in there is because he did write episode six, and yeah. episode six yeah. is the one that really hurt me. He co-wrote. always writes. He co-wrote. He's always the guy either doing episode six or the one that has like the big characters for these shows. Like that's his. Yeah. I'm gonna write this one. Right, and I mean, like, sparks. but but like you know, yeah. I like I'm. I still think Filoni ha- probably has the best grasp on like what Star Wars should be doing going forward and like where to include things. I I I still believe as a as a story head idea man that he's he's the right guy. Mm-hmm. Um. I just think like this was a misstep and and to, to directly acknowledge, like I think the core of the problem is just that this show was called the book of Boba Fett and it shouldn't have been. And like, that was a marketing choice that they made and they shouldn't have made it. This should have been called the Mandalorian season three, maybe subtitle book of Boba Fett, if, but it should have just been the Mandalorian season three because, during filming because it was. he's still a Mandalorian and you still could do that. And like, that's fine. I don't like, we could do weird anthology stuff where like some of these episodes are about Boba Fett. Some of these episodes are about Din. Some of these episodes are about them together. Cool. I don't think I think all of us would have had different expectations going into the show and different reactions to the way it unfolded if that had been the case. Like, unfortunately, we don't live in that reality. Yeah. But I do think like naming the show what they named it set up a lot of the problems for why Absolutely. these episodes were received the way they were. Now, there are certain things about the minutia of, of details, like getting Grogu and Din back together. I still wouldn't have liked that. 
the, a lot of the ways episode six unfolded wouldn't have been crazy about it necessarily, mm -hmm. but my expectations would have been more appropriately set for what I was going to get. Yeah. And I would still have issues, but I don't think they'd be as rampantly upsetting. Yeah. I, I almost kind of feel like this could have been an episode of man. This could have been an episode of Mandalorian season three. Like at, at the end of the day, there wasn't really that much that there wasn't really that much plot in this, in the season no. as much as there really should have been. Like if you had just done an hour long episode of Mandalorian season three to set up Boba Fett's um, uh, introduction into that show, like this is just like, or maybe a special episode or even a special season just called the Mandalorian, the book of Boba Fett, as you're talking about, like that changes a lot about the expectations I, of what this could do. I, I argued that like, if you were going to do it this speedily, if you weren't going to do more of the character development, we're desperately wishing that this show had because of what we thought it was going to be about, what we felt it should have been about for the book of Boba Fett. If you were going to do only this amount of development, those first four episodes honestly could have been two. And you do those first two episodes and then you do the Mando episodes and then you bring everything together and then you do some more story stuff. You maybe even have an episode because you're doing this anthology setup already, have an episode about Bo-Katan doing Man. her own thing somewhere else in the Man. galaxy and just put all those elements together and then have the Pike battle at the end. And then I'm like, Take great, you did it. You did it. Take all that shit out, dude. Just focus on him with the Tuscans, him getting revenge for the Tuscans with the Pikes. That's all. That's your character development. Take all that other shit out because that's the important fun stuff of the, of the stuff. Once the Tuscan stuff is out, I lose a lot of interest in the show. Completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like from episode well, three, I mean. like, it was hard for me to care. You condense those first four episodes into the core of it, which is a lot of it is the Tuscan yeah. stuff. And you make that like the present of, honestly, you do one whole episode that's the past, like capturing Boba all the way up to when he meets up with Fennec. And then you do one whole episode that's about the present of what he's doing now as Daimyo and the fact that he finds out that the Pikes are behind it. But by the end of the episode, that's when he finds out the Pikes are behind it. A lot of it is the present of him setting up his relationship with the people in the town mm -hmm. and being Daimyo. And then he's like, oh shit, the Pikes are behind that. Well, if I'm going to go after the Pikes, I'm going to need some help. Boom, 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 boom. Then you go to Mandalorian, you bring that shit in later. That all would have worked, and this would have been the Mandalorian season three, and, and nobody would have complained about that. I definitely can tell you, I would have enjoyed the show more if it was just Mandalorian Book of Boba Fett. I, Because, like, yeah. again, expectations are there, like, okay, it's not going to be just about this one dude. Okay, I get it. I really didn't like, I don't, I don't like bringing up internet arguments with it uh, as like arguments to like fight. But like, there was one argument that like really rubbed me the wrong way where it was just like, it's structured like a book. I go, that's just bad structure for a TV show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah. that's just I mean, not how TV shows like, are structured. Let me tell you, I thought like, I thought they were going to kill Boba Fett at the end of this. Cause like the book of Boba Fett means like, we're telling the story of Boba Fett. And, like he would have died a hero. And like, then I would have been truly living with the show. <laughs> Yeah, I'm that's right. when I would have been like, oh, just like, yeah, fuck Disney, I guess, right? Like, um, oh, yeah, had Boba died in the, in the end of the show, I was gonna be riots after the Tuscans. I was like, uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go out a hero we, for my people. We've definitely lightly touched on it, but I do want to highlight, like, regardless of like my problems with story and like scenes and the way certain developments played out, Tamora Morrison was a wonder to watch. Oh, I yeah, loved watching was. him at all times. I think he's great at delivering the energy of that character, helmet on or helmet off. Yeah, and I agree. I'm I'm really pleased with that. I'm really, really pleased with his uh, everything that he brought to the character and what he wanted. And there's been a lot of conversation about the fact that he wanted to like, <laughs> Favreau fought him tooth and nail for a lot of the dialogue that he wrote him because he wanted Boba to still be relatively silent. That he wanted Boba to maintain like a, a pretty tight knit vest. And like when he spoke, he wanted it to be as important as possible. Like he only spoke when it was really relevant to say something. That and I think sense. that could have presented a lot more to that character. Yeah. Um, so it, it it definitely is something where I'm like... The problem he's, is he's, the writing isn't very good. He's so. so very much the... Right, but that's why he wanted less. So that yes. like when it... Ma like, yes. Imagine if he like barely ever talked to Fennec in, in that flashback episode. And the very first time he says anything is when she's like, so you were with the Tuscans. I guess they made you soft. And, he, and the first thing he says to her is, no, no, they made me strong. Yeah. You're nothing without a tribe. And that's like the one thing. And I'm like... You have so much more to be captivated about this character when you know less about him. Yeah. It would make yeah, it was really, relationship with him make sense. It was really strange when like <laughs> he breaks out of his binds in the in the first episode and he turns to the for like for me, but coming off of like Return of the Jedi, this is like this is right after Return of the Jedi. And then he says to the Rodians, Rodian, do you want me to cut your binds? I'm like, this is a lot of dialogue for you. What's going on right now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, yeah. but you know, yeah. I, I totally agree with I totally agree with you, Sparks. Like, I really like Tamara Morrison in, in this role, and I like that I do appreciate that he was he's got the 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 age even though he's far older than boba fett should be um but he's he got the age so like boba fett's 40 in this in this show yeah. um but so he's like, like man it'll do shit to you it'll do shit to you um but he's if, oh, gained a little sorry no no offense boba fett um he still kicked my ass um the he's a bit older than 40 isn't he 
No, he's 41. I checked. You no, know, yeah, he's yeah, he's he was it's just 30 years like after like when he was doing how old is he in Return of the Jedi? Return of the Jedi, Return of the Jedi he's he's like he'd be in he'd be like 40 because when he gets out of Star Lake, but it's only so this is like this is this is seven to nine years later. Oh, right. It's so that like the, main, right. the main continuity, the current mm, continuity of the right. show is seven to nine years post Return of the Jedi. Okay. I, right. I understand the flashback stuff, but I'm talking about like where he's at now. He's he's like near 50. He looks he still looks older <clears throat> than he is. <clears throat> sure, sure. I'm yeah. not knocking that. Oh, I'm yeah, not yeah. knocking but, that. I'm just saying yeah, yeah. I think he's a bit older than 40 in the current timeline. Gotcha. But it's really cool seeing like like if you go back and you look at this show versus like Attack of the Clones and you see the same actor play Jango Fett and you see the same actor play Boba Fett and you see how Jango Fett is a much more calm, reserved Mandalorian and like years of being with the the empire with uh being almost dying in the starlight fett like has has hardened boba fett uh to the point that jango fett just never had because he grew up in a different society completely um oh, right. like, i really like i really liked how different he plays the role yeah yeah remember all those uh the jango fett flashbacks that didn't rem- didn't amount to anything right oh, on camino yeah. there was flashbacks wow, on camino so i 100% thought that the plot of the show was going to be there's like secret water on on dune dune there's secret water on tatooine right because they make a big point of how it used to be a planet full yes of water. so i thought it was going to be some like big thing like oh like like the pikes know of a secret reservoir that's going to change tatooine forever right like big political like change the foundation of the world and stuff holy and shit then, tatooine is just arrakis yeah y- yes yes <laughs> yes brandon welcome it's just arrakis <laughs> welcome uh and it didn't amount to anything like that and i'm just like oh they again like all this cool possibility and like, no, we're not gonna do anything cool or fun like that. So um, I think that part of the point that was supposed to be done, whether or not it was conveyed well or not with, with the flashbacks of like him watching Django's ship fly away is, is the sense of isolation of, of kind of being left on his own at all times. Like it's, it's that his, even when his dad was there, his dad was so constantly not there. Sure. And Boba never really having a home till he had the Tuscans. And I think that's supposed to be the point that like his first home truly is the Tuscans. As much as he liked his dad, as much as he cared about his dad, his dad was kind of like, there, there was a sense of an artificial bond. There. I don't know, man. I saw him on a train as a child with some bounty babies <laughs> in the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, but sure, family. No, I, no, I, you're right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I think that's what they're going for. I'm not saying like it's executed very well. I definitely don't think we need to see the same shot of him watching him fly away in two different flashbacks. I didn't think that's that the works. thing. They did it multiple times, so I'm like, okay, this means something yeah. even more than the isolation. Like, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's what I thought too. Like I thought like I thought when he got Slave One, maybe like he would go to Camino, right? Yeah. Like I thought that would be important. Yeah, I thought we were going to get a Camino, like going to Camino to ask about his dad scene. Yeah, there's there's definitely some mishandled idea in, in like how that affected. Also, like they do this oh whole God. thing where they're like, uh, they set up this idea that it's the bad dreams is what's happening to him is how we're seeing the flashbacks is these bad dreams. And at a certain point, it's just him like going and getting a ship and hanging out with Fennec. And I'm like, are these the bad dreams? Yeah. Are these the bad dreams? Man, Boba? <laughs> I just thought we've, have we ever seen Camino post post no. that? How interesting would it have been to see like what the hell they're doing now that they don't have to make a billion clones for an army. Is well, it, the, I, they doing? I'm not, I'm not caught up on bad batch, but I believe at the end of the first season, like Camino get like that, destroyed that, or something that I believe that species gets like wiped out by the mm. empire because they okay. don't want them to be able to facilitate a new army. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Sure. Yeah. The planet's still there. I just think that the, the facilities are gone. Yeah. I think. I haven't watched it. I This is a purely speculation on just vague things I've heard. No, because I know they go to Camino in that show. So well, I know that I know they start on Camino. I don't know if they ended if they ended there. We watched the first no. episode, didn't we? The la- I know the last episode. No. Yeah, we watched the first episode. The last episode title of the first season of Bad Batch is called Camino Lost. Well, there you go. <laughs> so go go from there with what you will. Yeah. Uh, so there are other people who know better than I do because they've actually watched the show. And I'm not I just sure. want to see those beautiful long neck people um uh i really love uh, going back to tamara morse's performance i really love when he's like with the rancor he's able to convey like a childlike wonder with it i think mm-hmm. he plays all the facets of boba just extremely well yeah. um i talked to you about it that there's the the really great line where um trejo says uh, uh trejo's talking with him and, and um, boba says i thought they were only bred to fight talking about the rancors mm-hmm. which is a great parallel to boba because clones were only bred to fight and uh learning that there's a different facet to them is just is there's there's such good little nuggets and it's just like the the, the macro hole of the show just wasn't like stitched together properly there are there, there's yeah. like a mandalorian piece that's just like striking straight down the middle of it and, and kind of messing it up yeah mm-hmm. uh is is a bummer um the biggest thing for me is that 
I'm sad going forward that in Mandalorian season three, he's already back with Grogu. Yeah, that's such a... And also, again, to bring it up, if somebody doesn't Mm. watch Boba Fett, they were robbed of that reunion. That character, the, the season two finale where you, you get Luke and like, wow, this is the end of the season and, and our heroes are, I, are departing. I honestly, at this point, because of just how they promote it, I highly doubt that by the time that comes out, there will be people who are passionately watching Mandalorian season three that don't watch Boba Fett or at least those episodes because now they're just showing everything. Oh, absolutely. That's in it, so it'll happen regardless. But, but I, there, I, are, I get you there is a subset. I know people who are not watching Boba Fett because sure. they don't care about Boba Fett. Sure. Like it's not, I, it's, not as, it's not as large, but like there are people who are getting bummed out by this. I liked, uh, as far as, like, moments, like, I do like seeing Grogu jump into Din's arms. Like, I like those characters. I like that dynamic. It's cute. It's a nice moment. It's just yeah. in the wrong show. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I agree with Ryan's point that he has only kind of hinted at here, but definitely talked to me about off-air, which is uh, the major domo gets real played up a little too much and pretty annoying. Oh, um, yeah, I did not this like is the This is the Twi'lek who's like, uh, if I may make a negotiation for you, not that I'm better than anybody. Uh, the ooh, only time... That guy, that guy got way too much <laughs> screen time. The only time that I liked him uh, there, there's a mention of Cor- he was training Coruscant, which is kind of cute. But like the yeah. only time that I liked him is when he's like, "Okay, l- l- I'll go out there and give him the surrender." And Bob was like, "Okay, yeah, sure." And he writes down the surrender. He's like, "Okay, the- sure, Bob." I was like, "Oh man, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. fields of Tatooine will be flowered with your bodies yeah. if you're dead." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh damn, Boba wrote that poem off the top of his head." Yeah, Boba's Goes Boba secret heart. Boba's got. Um, I did like that scene. <laughs> Honestly, if they that's the shot, only time I liked them. If they would have yeah, shot him right there, the book of Boba Fett. He's gonna write a book, a poetry book. <sighs> the sands of Tatooine. Oh, still there he goes. <laughs> that's the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> if they would have, if they would have shot the major domo right there. Then would have I would have been really happy and I would have been perfect with his character arc. They made but it even that dude just keeps showing up. They made it even worse when they paired him with Amy Sedaris and had them both screaming in a corner oh. from the ra- rancor. I was like, please. I feel please bad stop. if if you don't like Amy Sedaris, which I do. If you don't, then it's just like two characters. You're like, wow. I like I like Amy Sedaris. I definitely think that like her character can be played annoying. Yeah. And uh, that that moment when her and the Domo are paired together, I'm like, stop. Yeah. Wait, she wrote that. She wrote that whole thing from Moss Eisley to Moss Espa. Yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. That, that's, a, that's a hell oh, of a taxi fare. Oh, let's talk about real quick uh, a, a huge positive. Uh, Jin's new ride, which is a hot rod Naboo starfighter. I yeah, the N1. love yeah. it so, so much. It's not so the Razor black Crest, black but from, to match the best car. Ah, whatever. I, I know it's not the Razor Crest, but God. I love that ship. It is the I love that ship. Uh, uh, my I favorite wanna... thing about it is that it has an exposed engine. I <laughs> love it. It's just Make like a hot sense rod. A it's just like, <laughs> it's just like Vin Diesel's friend. hot rod. It has the exposed part. It's like, this is a freaking Star Wars hot rod if there ever was a Star Wars hot rod. Yeah, All I mean, you need to do is whole... just like... <sighs> that's what that whole sequence about. Brandon, you love the prequels. You love the N1. I do like the N1 Starfighter. I'm a big fan of the N1 Starfighter. I was happy to see it again. Uh, and we get him saying wizard. Woo! I, I used wizard. to have, I used to have, uh, there are two Lego set. There are two Lego Star Wars sets that I really enjoyed. It was the N1 Starfighter and the uh, Jedi Starfighter from Revenge of the Sith. Those are the two, fav- those are my two favorite prequel ships. Now, um, uh, I think, I think the, the N1 is the sleekest Pre uh, original trilogy Starfire we've oh, ever yeah. been shown. Yeah, I, I've sure. always really liked that design. Uh, I think it's I think it's nice. It's it's really unique yeah. uh, in the world of Star Wars. I, it's completely I love... different than anything that has ever been in Star Wars. So true. It, it looks really really great. I really do love it. The I think it's design, a, I think baby. It's a great design. Yeah. So uh, interesting. So, so interestingly, I was I was watching this visual effects artist react video where they talked about Star Wars, the difference between Star Wars and Star Trek, and I want to bring this up with the M1 Starfighter specifically, because I think this is really this is really kind of cool. Um, in Star Wars, it, because it's a dystopian, all the ships are 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 designed um, kind of uh, not like they're they're like designed like they were just put together on the fly. Whereas Star Trek, everything is like mirrored. Like you put yeah. you put you, you like mirror a ship. It's, if, if it's got five panels on this side, it's got five panels on this side. Whereas Star Wars, it, that there's you can't put it down a straight line and mirror it. It just won't work. The N1 Starfighter can, and that was so. that's why it was so jarring in, in episode one. I'm sure people felt the same way. Um, the N1 Starfighter is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a utopian ship, much more in the similar vein of Star, Star Trek than Star Wars. But in this episode, they tweak it so much 
that it becomes the dystopian type of model that we see with with the with the original trilogy Star Wars. And I think that was kind of cool of merging the prequel era to the. It's kind of what 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 Dave Filoni did really well with with Webbles, like merging the prequel era into the original trilogy era uh, and mm-hmm. using that ship design to kind of make it make this like really uniform ship into something that's not really uniform. Also, he just outruns the that's a lot of worlds, yeah. What would you say, Ryan? It's the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, like, I uh, love that. I, I love that detail. I just love, I love the part where he once again sees the space cops. He essentially hits the Nas button, flies away, and they're just like, "Yeah, no, I don't want." I do, I, I do really that. like that. I do really like that exchange where they're where where he's just like, "I have I'm just test driving the ship. Like he's got codes. Like I just haven't updated my codes yet." Blah blah blah. And it's like, uh, "Hey, your voice sounds familiar. Do you know anything about that?" It's like, "Oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, no oh, bye." Yeah, I don't want to do this paperwork. Yeah, um, I like. Uh, I think I like more. It's definitely like numerous small details and some bigger details, but I think I like more than I dislike about the show. Even though, like, the overall thing at the end of the day becomes like a, oh man, <laughs> like it's just kind of a bummer. Not necessarily like I hate all of it, but like uh, just a bummer. Like we didn't. We didn't get everything we deserved out of it uh, when, yeah. when it comes to in terms of characters or moments or fleshing out of the world. And, yeah. and definitely like the Tuscans leaves a bad taste in my mouth, especially the fact that like it doesn't come around by the end of the finale. I, I wanted so badly for the finale to have Boba engaging with Tuscan tribes, turning over power, helping them to like lift themselves up in the eyes of what the, the economy of Tatooine is. Um, the fact that we didn't go there really bums me out. There's a part of me that almost does want a follow-up on the Boba Fett story just so that we can fix some of these mistakes. We can explore some of these characters more. We can do justice to the Tuscans, even if it'll yeah. come a, a, a year oh, or two late. The thing that worries me... Go ahead, Brandon. Oh, I was going to say, like one of the moments that I do like in the finale, um, and and it me, leads me to believe we'll see Boba Fett again in Mandalorian season three or even beyond that, um, is the is the um, the moment where Boba says to Din, like, "You can leave," and Din just this, you know, they have this like moment together where where they kind of had this like bond um, mm-hmm. because Boba because they they feel so strongly to each other. Like Din is making. Dan is kind of giving Boba a look into what his Mandalorian creed is because Boba is so far beyond Mandalorian creed, any, any of it. Um, and Boba is kind of like, they have this like mutual, I just kind of like that moment when that, in that before they go out, I think that's kind of neat. Yeah. I like their relationship and I like seeing the two of them in their armor get up together. It's very cool to see. Um, I'm sure we're not done with Boba, whether it's just in Mandalorian appearances, but I would, I would like another crack at just, being able to actually explore Boba's story. And I know there's enough of a backlash about how this season was handled, regardless of if what peop what part of the season people like to know that this was unevenly received. Yeah, um yeah. Uh, and and like more than that, I just I, I agree with you, Brandon. I really like when Boba's like, you believe all that Bantha crap about the religion and everything. And he's like, yeah, and he's like, good. I'm glad uh, you know, like good. I'm glad you've got that uh in in the part of it that matters, that kind of thing. Like that's yeah, that's a good this is the way because from his logic he's like at least you have a tribe. Yeah, you have yeah. something yeah. so um, more than just yourself because it's when you have yourself that you're lost. I I want to believe <clears throat> in, in the future, but like this season specifically, it made me it made me go, okay, they don't care about the Tuscans. I don't think we're we will get more Boba Fett. I do not think we're getting any more of that stuff. It does not. It, there is nothing in the season that made me go. They care about the Tuscans whatsoever. I, I can't refute that. I just I want to. I, I have you hope. spent this whole season believing. Hope. Now you're waiting hope. for the next season to believe. I just can't. I just can't live my life that way. No, no, no. It's not. I, it's I, not like I, it's I, not I, me I, waiting. It's me hoping that yeah. something will still happen because, like, that's Star Wars has always been a property that is later like fixing things that it fell short of previously. <laughs> that's always Star Wars. Yeah, but like, like at all times. So no, will it make will it make this better? Will it make it like okay the way they handle the Tuscan shit in this season? No. I would still like if at some point we get the moment where oh, Boba of does course. that. That's what I hope for. Of like, course. That's what I want. I just, I don't see how you see that that's even a possibility of happening. Like I have I just, in my dream for, for a lot of stuff. I That's never, that's like a zero chance. Well, it's only, I think it's only a possibility if Boba gets another mm-hmm. like dedicated mm-hmm. season. I, 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 this, he didn't even get his own dedicated season. Yeah. <laughs> he, there's no way it's going to happen. It's so sad. It bums me out. Even my, more. my, my issue with this is is goes back to like the Ahsoka problem. Like I just 
this season specifically felt to me that 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 this team is only only cares about at this point to just put action figures together and i'm not here for that and i'm i hope i'm wrong you know yeah. it's kind of like you know star wars is all about hope like i hope i'm wrong mm-hmm. but i'm just worried that i'm not and this this because this show had a big problem for me and it was that it, as a, it's the action figure analogy that i keep going back to like i just i just don't know if I'm if I'm ever going to be on board with Star Wars again, if that is in fact the case, if that is what they're doing, because all they care about is kind of making, you know, kind of giving giving fans that serotonin and nostalgia, and I'm yeah. just not here for that. And like I I, I joked earlier, I was like the Last Jedi ruined Star Wars for me because now nothing will ever have depth again, and I'm only partially joking, um, because like there's nothing wrong with being fun and surface level shit. Like, you know, I love, I love a lot of like great comedies and action movies. Cause like, if you're doing something really well, you don't have to go beyond the surface, but when you start to dig at it and then you go, actually, I'm not interested anymore. That's when I lose, that's when I lose interest. And that's what a lot of Marvel stuff's been doing recently. And that's what this entire season of the show did for me. So that's like, kind of what I, I go kind of with. You. Yeah. That, that's kind of, kind of would go back to like, I liked Mandalorian season one more than season two. Like I like season two, but season two was really just kind of din jar and going to, character going to pre-established character to pre-established character kind of just that's just really it it's like the din yeah. Djarin road trip show almost and like yeah. i like those things i think they're handled very well they're handled certainly better than the than the sixth episode of this one um but like that feels to me like we were leading n- now looking back on it like mandalorian season one good into it love it but now it kind of kind of feels like season two of the mandalorian was setting us up to get to where where i fear we're going with the post episode six of this show. So yeah, I think this is going to be a weird analogy. Uh, so Morbius is coming out soon, right? And that is the test of like, can Sony do its own universe without like all the Spider-Man villains, right? And then whatever movie comes after that is like, we'll like, we'll respond to that. Mm-hmm. This to me is like their Morbius. Like we try to do this thing that made the, that that's like not what like what we thought it was going to be. Next is Kenobi. Kenobi is going to be a real test for me. If Kenobi. Yeah almost like Moon Knight, if Kenobi's bad, or if it's just, hey, here's a character, here's all the characters from the Clone Wars, and they're all old now. Like, if it's if it's going to be like this, then, like, I, that's the one where I'm like, I might be out. The if only... It, Kenobi is, is, like, too important. The only thing about that gives me, like, the only reason why I bring Ahsoka over Kenobi is because Ahsoka is Fabro and Filoni, whereas yeah. this, whereas Kenobi isn't. Fabro and, yeah. F- and Filoni don't touch Kenobi, aren't touching Kenobi. It's a different team completely. Which scares me because mm-hmm. if it's bad, that means their influence might still carry over. Right, and that that is that is a fear that I, that I that I share. But I am still more willing to kind of go back to the Kenobi well because I'm like, well, at least I know it's a different team. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure what I'm expect what I'm expecting. But the issue Tatooine. that I, the issue that I well yeah Tatooine. But the issue that I do come up with is the is the post Rise of Skywalker thing of like where where this kind of fan service moments that we've seen in episode six of Boba Fett specifically that we saw with Mandalorian season two, the ending of it specifically um, uh, that we see that we see with a lot of rise of Skywalker is that's the stuff that Lucasfilm is seeing the most positive return on. And they're leaning constantly more and more towards that. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, I, I don't mind it. I don't mind leaning a little bit into that, but I'm kind of worried that we're falling off a cliff into it. They're Um, sacrificing quality. Yeah, and I feel like we're kind of falling off a cliff into it. And I hope not. I hope not. Because we, again, like, we just saw Spider-Man No Way Home, which is like the best fan service ever made. You can have good fan service. Just put quality and care behind it. Yeah. Don't just, don't just like put it out. I'm not saying that they're just putting it out. They're obviously trying to make something good. Yeah. But there's just like a disconnect of like, when you're writing this Boba Fett show, like like the writing room, like were they just like we are going to make half of the show not about Boba Fett from the beginning? Was that really their intention? Because if so, then I think that's that's a loss from the beginning. Then then like what it had to doing? have been because this show was all filmed and edited by the time it was released. It's just like it's it's that's baffling to me. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like they it's, it's, it's not like they were like nobody likes this. Let's throw an episode of Mandalorian in this real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just at an interesting place. Um, yeah, like I love Star Wars. Like I'm never I'm gonna like. I'm excited for Kenobi. We'll, we'll find out some more about that today if you're watching Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't know. Don't you guys know if I, I've seen anything? I don't like... We'll, we'll see it online, buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be online the second it's on. I know. I, like, I don't faster. like... Even though we'll honestly probably see it first. Yeah, <laughs> you probably, yeah, because I'm, I'm going to be streaming the game, so you're probably going to see it but long before I do. I don't, you're probably going to text me like, have you seen it? I was like, seen what? I don't like being the cynical about this. I really don't. And like, I, I in this episode, I got very angry. And I 
And I don't like that. I don't like that this elicited this emotional response in me. I wish it elicited a different one. And I'm concerned going forward that this is the only emotional response that Star Wars will elicit in me from now on. And I don't want that to be the case. And I hope it's not. That's that. That is that is fair because as much as I do like you know Mandalorian seasons one and two, but like there is a trajectory of like you could see a plan forming. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and again, I think Kenobi will be a big test, even though it's not that team. It's still in the same universe. It's still like the executive producers of all the shows and stuff. So like, yeah. we'll that's going to be the real big test for me. I, I just, like. You know what this made me realize is that like I'm gonna start reading all the High Republic shit because everyone's complaining about not getting new characters and stuff. Like, no guys, there's been like a bunch of uh, literally books and books and books of new shit. And I'm you're like, gonna be, you're gonna be really happy to know what our book club is for the next podcast. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Marvel Unlimited. So like, I now I'm like, you know what? If I'm not being serviced, I will go to somewhere where I will be serviced. And I'm like, that's kind of nice to have that there. Stay tuned for our our, our past book club. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, uh, when this is out. Then that's the, the recent yes. one, but the next one. All right, you're gonna want I'm, more, want more Star Wars conversation with us. Check out the podcast that's coming out this following week. I'm done. If you guys are, I'm done. Um, I am definitely, though I'm not crazy about Din and Grogu back together. I am intrigued about where we're. I know we're heading now at the beginning of season three, which is that he's going to try to wash himself in the waters, the mines of Mandalore, Moria. We're going to Mandalore, guys. I'm so excited to see that, at least. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm always down for, like, bring me bo -Katan. Like, anything Mandalorian-related, like, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. That all makes sense to me. Leave, just leave Luke. Leave Luke to have out of yes. it for a I second, think, I think that is what we've done. Yeah. I, I appreciate the restraint to not send Luke in the X-Wing and make him part of that fight. Because I, I was so... Dude, I was so scared. Up. I was like, they're about to ruin this effing finale. I swear to God. <laughs> Thank God it was a little baby. <laughs> When when Grogu was in that cockpit, I was like, "Oh, thank God!" The little yeah. okay, the little uh, uh, ch uh, Lord of the Rings chainmail armor made into the little bow with the ears, like very cute. Love it again. <laughs> Wish it was a Mandalorian, real cute. <clears throat> I I do um, like that he took the that he was like, "Let's forge the spear into something mm -hmm. for a foundling." I thought that was cute. Yeah, that was yeah. really cool. Uh, yeah. So Beskar is not allowed to be a weapon, I guess, unless it's the Needler shot thing that they fire because that's Beskar. That's Beskar. Um Shh, it's a defense mechanism. I think she's straight up I'm not the only one that thinks this, but I think she's straight up destroyed it because she doesn't want it used on her. Maybe. Mm, okay. I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of double talk that I think the armor has been doing uh to to Din. Um like the 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 way she dismisses him felt very much like oh we're you you're up to something. I'm telling you get ready for secret betrayals to be revealed. I feel it. Do you think she's lying to Din about how many are actually left of their sect? She yes. says that it's just the three of them. I don't, oh, think, I don't yeah. think she's being honest. 100%. Yes. There is there is some sect that's like secretly waiting. These crazy zealots. I think she wants yeah. to take back Mandalore. Yeah. yeah. She wants to I think, she, she, wants to I think she wants to trick Din into leading her to bo -Katan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mandalorian Sorry. Civil Wars Part Two is about to happen. Oh, also, uh, we learned we learned something that I thought was kind of cool. I don't know if we learned this in in the Clone Wars when we first beat the Dark Saber, but it's made out of Beskar. Yeah, they say it. Mm -hmm. The the hilt is no. In this show, yeah. you haven't seen Clone Wars. You can't say that. No, um, he says that the hilt is a is a grade of Beskar I've never seen before. When he gives it to the army. that's what I'm talking about in this in this show. I don't oh. know if we heard it in Clone Wars, but in this show, I felt it was a reveal that it was made out of Beskar. The, oh, the hell. Okay. Honestly, I'm, honestly, I'm sorry, in Clone Wars, I don't think we talked about Beskar anywhere near as much as we talk about it now. I don't think so either. So I'm pretty yeah. sure that we did not know that. He slices a dude in half. <clears throat> pretty yeah, cool. he does. I still like the dark uh, saber. I think it's a cool lightsaber. I'm glad. I'm glad it has a has a part in this. What's going on in there? He's bringing him in cold, Jerry. <laughs> 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 oh, I love that meme. That was pretty good. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot to like uh, and a lot to be disappointed in. And uh, yeah. I think if you want, if you are someone, dear audience, who wants to maybe like find a reason to emphasize the positives and not dwell too much on the negatives, I highly recommend going and listening to Friend of the Podcast, Ken Napsox Force Center with Joseph Scrimshaw because they did their book of Boba Fett reports. And while they acknowledge where the criticisms are and the things that they don't like about it, they don't dwell on them and instead choose that they want to amplify the things that they love about it and give you a lot of Star Wars knowledge background. So if you maybe want a cleansing experience of Boba Fett, go check that out. I highly recommend it because we are not that. <laughs> we got our stupid critical glasses on today. I'll folks. tell you right. what. I'll tell you what. Stay tuned for our Peacemaker Fake Nerds Watch, which will be very different.
Oh man, I hope y'all like Peacemaker because oh boy, talk about a show we should have been doing week to week. Oh, I can't wait <laughs> to taste it. Oh, you only that only makes sense if you watch the show. Hold on, Ben. No, yeah. he hasn't watched it. Have you started it? No. no. There are eight episodes, Ben. I know. It's okay. He's just gonna skip the best show that's on TV right now. I'm not gonna skip it. it with his We're doing well, it next week. We got a week. week left, Ben. We're doing it next week. If you're not, if you're not caught up by next week, I'm sorry. You're not on this episode. You're Eight hours, baby. In my power. Peacemaker. Next week, check it out. That'll be our next fake nerds watch. Uh, we're kind of. Eh, about Boba Fett. We'll see what the future of Star Wars television holds. There's a lot still ahead of us. There's Kenobi. It's never going to stop. Season two, Ahsoka. Andor and season one season first. Three. Yeah, and or season one and oh, two. Oh, so Brandon, uh, Stellan Skarsgård, the wonderful actor, just said an interview saying that he's start. He's going to sh- uh, shoot and or season two soon. Oh, so and or season one trailer coming soon. Yeah. Oh, I think um, I figured we'd get that soon. And of course, and of course, potentially we'll we'll let you know when we know if there's more Boba Fett. On the I was horizon. actually surprised. I was actually surprised Andor isn't coming before Kenobi because they started filming before Kenobi did. Oh, I think everybody's surprised Andor didn't come before this. Yeah, yeah. It's, that show got. We saw the, like that thing like a year Andor ago. Andor was announced at the same time as Mandalorian. It was those two were the first things. Weird. Weird. Well, Weird. Weird. anyway, uh, we when it used to have. Uh, uh, I forget his name, K2SO. Uh, oh, um, Katcha, now he's not part of it at all. Yeah. Oh, he's not? No. No. So, he was at the a, announcement. Do they do they at least have a K2 unit in the show? He, he probably shows up in season two now. They probably were like, actually, we don't Just need you for season don't one. Don't get rid of the character. Oh my God. <laughs> this would be before he met him, I guess. Sure. Then why don't even care anymore? Yeah. Aww. So, um, yeah, so this is this is uh, Fake Nerds Watch. Uh, we don't know what we're going to be doing as a group, like, weekly yet. We're kind of, uh, we were it's pretty burnt very, from last ta- from last year, so we're going to take it one show it, at a time. Moon, it's Moon very like Moon Knight. Moon Knight in March? Moon Knight. Um, That's next month, holy shit. But you can check out my weekly Star Trek reviews with uh, Mike, 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 I almost said it again, Michael Carls from the Down Rain Nerdy Podcast. Um, and soon, just a little podcast, Cookie, will be, show, will be uh, coming back with us. Uh, we're doing Star Trek Discovery, and then we'll do Picard and Strange New Worlds, and we'll never stop. Star <laughs> There's Trek, so much Star forever. Trek. Star Trek and Star Wars, here forever. You know what? Star Trek has yet to make me mad. That's so, good. You know, so far, there you go. All right. Uh, so we call we're it. Not, a... We're not counting into darkness. Star Trek hasn't made me mad in a few years. There <laughs> okay. you go. <laughs> when did that like... come out? Twenty twelve. Has it been at least a decade? Twenty twelve. There you go. At least a decade. So yeah, it hasn't made me mad in a decade. All right. Should we get out of here then? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Like this video. Subscribe to our channel. Um, you know, you can check out all sorts of things on this channel, such as our Fickner's Watch uh, back catalog of tons of stuff. We've done all the Marvel shows from last year. Um, we did, we've done Mandalorian. Um, we're, like I said, Star Trek uh, and upcoming Peacemaker. A review will be, will be coming up soon. Um, I think we're all kind of regretting not doing that weekly. Um, so, ah. so stay tuned for our full recap, which will probably be just as long as this, if not longer. Um all right, that and, and of course you can check out Basement Arcade. Basement Arcade, we're doing uh, Mortal Kombat X episodes are coming out uh, oh. a little bit. Does Ben just wax his yeah. desk? Um, <laughs> and uh, Basement Arcade pause menu, uh, you can check that show out as well. That also exists in an audio format. Uh, Basement, Ar- uh, nope, Animation Station and Figured's Victor Book Club, and of course our mothership show, Victor Podcast, which goes live every Sunday on YouTube. Um, or you can check out our audio feed of that. Um, or you can check out the rewind uh, this week. This past week, we have done, because it's when this is coming out, we have done a review of Nightmare Alley, plus Super Bowl trailers, plus Nintendo Direct. Not the Oscars, though, because that's too much crap. <laughs> and uh, you can check out our upcoming episode, where uh, if we kind of danced around it before, but we were going to be talking about what would the implications be if Lucasfilm actually retconned the sequel trilogy. That and uh, the implications of using CGI Luke and what it means for pop culture going forward. Yes, oh very it's fun. A negative conversation, yep. isn't it? <laughs> Might be fun. All right, check us, check that out. Be fun stuff uh, all around uh, over the Faker Podcast family of podcasts, and of course, you can check out our Patreon and our T Public. You can check out all that stuff. All those links are below. All those links are on our website, FakerPodcast.com. I'm at BT McLaurin Instagram and Twitter. I also write for Screen Rant, and I'm doing a series of of uh, Marvel pieces for Atomic Geekdom. You can check those out. Um, uh, ben. 
You can find me on the internet at Ben Maga 27 also writing for Old School Gamer Magazine, the website and the magazine itself. Go Nintendo.com and Fusion Gaming Magazine. Sparks? Uh, you can find me keeping hope alive at SparksWitty on Instagram, Twitter, S-P-A-R-K-Z Witty. Also, real quick, it was one note that I did want to touch on. They incorporated the red-blue force field shield thing that we saw in Dune, guys. Now when we're force field is getting weak, we see the red. It did it's it. true. Uh, and Brandon's gone. Bye, Brandon. Ryan. You can find me always loving Frank Herbert's Dune at DJ Tony Snark. All right. Like this video. Subscribe to our channel. Check us out wherever you want. Uh, until next time you see us, stay fake nerds. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way? Is it? Is it? <laughs> is this the way? <laughs>